Good evening, good afternoon, and good morning to you wherever you are in this fine land of ours, in this whole world of ours, covering all the time zones here, coming to you live from the east coast of Canada, where it is unseasonably warm today, which is exciting because I think it's unseasonably cold for my good friend and co David. How are Hello, you? everybody. Welcome, Internet. I'm good. I'm very good. Warm and toasty now. <laughs> very good. What is the weather like outside? It is, uh, it is not terrible. We had a snap uh, more closer to the Rockies than us. It really dipped down into like minus 30 Celsius, which I guess is also minus 30 Fahrenheit. Um, here, it's like 12 below 15 below today which i mean is normal november weather so we're we got about eight inches of snow on the ground winter winter is here it's here now winter for is real. Here. yeah the the prophecy of the uh the song of ice and fire has has come to pass yep um i didn't get any dire so, wolves <laughs> Bullshit. so those of you who have watched the show before may note and if you are astute, you may note that we have a slightly different layout on screen today, and we are trying something slightly different with the software that we are using to hopefully move forward and get some ideas that we thought would be fun interactions, but we actually just need to take a tiny step and switch software. So today, hopefully, we will uh, all will be smooth. Maybe. Would you, if not, you know, would you describe this look as exciting and fresh, Paul? Uh, no. Would you consider it as appealing to the key demo? Which is, yes, it, I believe it, absolutely. Male it is. It is uh, to forty. We are. We are all, all the all the Twitchers and mm -hmm. the and the TikTokers. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. They will. They will come and they will say, "Hey, hey, my dude. <laughs> my, you're my not. Dudes. You're not playing. You're not playing Halo. <laughs> Lols. <laughs> yeah. GG." There you mm. go. That's I've now exhausted my Twitch vernacular. Very good. We're well, so fucking uh, old. <laughs> so as you know, to, you know on, well, hopefully you know, and if you don't, if you're joining us for the first time, welcome on Toast to Toast AM. We like to cover an old show. Well, it's a current yes. show, but we like to cover old episodes of a show called Coast to Coast AM mm -hmm. in the era where it was hosted by our a friend is the wrong word. Someone we are a fan of, Art Bell. Yes. Uh, a skeptic slash non-skeptic. I uh, definitely think skeptic would be a hard label to apply to him. There were certainly a couple things he was skeptical about, but not many. <laughs> not many. Yeah. Well, I sometimes describe it as if, you know, Fox Mulder ran a, ran a podcast. Yes. He likes to... Uh, you definitely like to entertain, put all options on the table and let everyone decide. So yep. the magic before we get into AM tonight's, radio. I'm very excited about tonight's episode because I have a bit of like history with this. I don't know if you knew that you picked this one out. We'll, I did we'll not. To it. I did not. There, I feel like I am jumping into the deep end tonight where typically I'm more familiar with the subject matter than you are. Yes. Tonight, I, I very am, uh, definitely am not. Um, not only the subject matter, but I'm also familiar with the subject. Like, I'm familiar yes. with the person being interviewed. The so. person. I know apparent, him and Ken Ham have some history, apparently. Is that They do. Correct? Yes. Yeah. We'll get to that in a minute. We'll get to that in a Ken, minute. I don't want to. Uh, sorry, I don't want to. Do, you know. do we have a spot? We have not discussed this. Do we have a sponsor tonight? Yeah, let's uh, let's just get that out of the way. We'll pay our bills, and then we can, okay. we can get into this. Um you know, Paul, I had to go into minor emergency this week for stitches. Uh, it was pretty bad. My hands were really cut up. Like so many of us, I badly injured myself while building my new deck, doing some minor construction around my house. And I thought to myself, there has to be a better way to attach one piece of wood to another than driving metal spikes through it with the palm of your hand. And now there is hammers. With a hammer, you can accomplish, accomplish almost any task at home or at the office. They are absolutely perfect. 
for driving nails into wood, which was what I was doing, but you can use them for so many things. You can drive nails into wood. You can drive things like nails and spikes into composite materials. Uh, you can drive nails into your enemies or anything else that needs it. Uh, not only are they fantastic for putting things together, they're absolutely unbeatable when it comes to knocking things apart. Uh, I, I can't say enough good things about them. I got a chance to use one and I love it. Uh, they're now available in claw, sledge, or war versions. Uh, and they are available anywhere fine products are sold. If you use the promo code toast to toast while ordering a hammer, you will receive a free box of screws at no extra charge. That's the amazing deal I was able to get for watchers of this program. Buy hammers today. They really hit the nail on the head. Hammers. All right, everyone. Thank you to Dave and thank you to Hammers. I am slightly concerned that you may have received free hammers that we will need I, uh, to disclose. I, I got a whole box of them, man. I got so many <laughs> hammers. The, we have to disclose to the FCC or something. I'm not quite sure how that works. Uh, no, they don't have those guys here. We're fine. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Well, thank you to hammers. Cheers to, to hammers. Cheers to hammers. All right. Well... Our show tonight came, I, boy, I didn't even look to see what year it was. What, did you Did you know what year it was? I actually don't remember. I thought it was the late 90s. It was like 98, 99, somewhere in there. And, yeah. and it, it, Y2K doesn't come up or fact, well, we'll see if, I don't, I didn't listen to the whole thing, so we'll see how it goes. Um, So, the guest that Art brought on the show t was... Carl Baugh and Carl Baugh. Oh, I was, sorry. You, so this originally dated Wednesday, June 12th, 2002. Was oh, 2002. Point. So we already yeah. knew that we fully survived the Y2K. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Okay. So Carl Baugh mm -hmm. uh, was a, is still, he's still alive, young earth creationist who was, he became famous in a few different ways. And one was that he had a TV show uh, on like some religious networks. Oh, okay. Not like called, okay, yeah. no, like called uh, creation in the 21st century, something like that. But it was, you know, aired on the kind of shows that, you know, evangelical Tammy Faye would have been on that kind of thing. Yeah. 100. And Street. So yeah, that kind of thing. And he also got, um, anyway, it doesn't matter. He, he, he started going on sketchy things and, and proclaiming his young earth creation stuff. And that's all, that's all fine and good. But what happened was the stuff he was spouting was so non-scientific that, uh, the luminaries at places like Answers in Genesis and Creation Ministries International and the other creationist organizations, which we, um, which we, you know, already would dis discount. They had, uh, they still have to this day articles up on their sites warning people not to listen to the claims of Carl Bob because they're loony, they're they're deceptive. <laughs> they are, the... uh, they are unreliable. I think uh, loony was my phrasing. Unreliable and potentially deceptive was literally like phrasing from the Answers in Genesis website. So. Everyone. This man is he he is a trained scientist dish well, or something of some no, kind, right? Doesn't so he have some degrees? He has he told people that he had three degrees, two science degrees, and a theology degree. The trouble was as people started going digging into that, they were of the kind of the diploma mill kind where you can just basically ah. pay your money. Yeah. And they the... and they'd bestow upon you. Mexico City upstairs school of medicine. <laughs> yeah. Correct. So to to date, and we'll and we'll see what which things have been, to to date no one has uh, has evidence that he's he does not have any accredited degrees for certain, and we're not even sure whether he legitimately has these non accredited degrees. Anyway, all that to say, we're gonna jump in. We're gonna see how this goes. Um Shannon has a really good idea for a t shirt for you. You need uh -oh. you need to make one of those. No, now we've shut it down. Yep, right there. Oh, yeah. 
there we go we need it anyway it doesn't matter yes because I, yeah. I i i get bored with my own stories dave that's yeah. how life works yeah okay so if you get a mohawk then even your stories would be people it's captivating do you remember when i had a mohawk no you had a mohawk at, at some point i do no. not remember okay that. good so we didn't know each other at that point no, apparently not. That predates uh, no, me. that would have been that would have been when I was in high school, and and no one has those pictures. Don't ask my mom. <laughs> oh my! Well, hmm. not okay. none of this full hot garbage. <laughs> it was the real deal. It would real, real ladies, deal. Real ladies. Real deal. A lot of hairspray. A lot of hairspray. All right. Um, let's just jump into the episode. And oh, and oh, oh. So, um. Super chats are appreciated. Yes. We will we will stop the show and and engage with with the various chats, and uh, and hopefully this is a fun evening because I'm ready for a fun evening. And if you really impress us, then we will take a uh, we will a belt in your honor. Toast. I'm on. I'm just you. stocked with rum and coke tonight. That's that's basically all I'm stocked. I with. have a wonderful old fashioned. I have mixed using 1792 Ooh, bourbon, which is fantastic. Ooh. They're That's saving right. that for the super chats. I sure would like to drink it. So here we have a wonderful cream ale, just you know, to make it possible for me to interact with you. <laughs> well, I whatever. I appreciate that you're willing to take one for the team. <laughs> right, like with the Mohawk. It sounds like a wonderful. That's yeah, a movie I've like, watched. Sounds like <laughs> sounds like uh, I could be in trouble here with my admission. Anyway. Yeah. Hopefully that doesn't come in time before the, the three ends. Let's get to it. Oh, all right. Uh oh, you're not hearing it, are you? In, oh, in no. the second hour is oh, uh, somebody who's really been a big hit here, Carl Edward Ball. Uh, so uh, he's a what? Who is uh, Carl Edward Ball? A uh, doctor, Carl Ball actually is a creationist. He so as we discussed, not not really not a, I'm not mean, a doctor. Not a doctor in the sense that you'd ha you will have a accredited degree in anything. Yeah. I'm He's doing some really, really interesting biology. <laughs> things uh, that I really want to ask about. Uh, he's putting together this biosphere and what he's i think it, I, believe, I believe he's attempting to do is create the conditions that were on earth when life emerged uh, supposedly uh, all those uh, many years ago however many years ago life emerged we argue a lot about that on this program you know how did we emerge and when did we emerge and all the rest thanks timothy thank you timothy appreciate you I don't know any questions about this? Bed. Any questions about this biosphere, Dave? We're gonna let, let Carl mm -hmm. tell us in his own words. I uh, I do have questions, but yeah, I'm willing to let Carl right. ex explain it. That well, anyway, he's a, he's a creationist and he's a bright guy. Now, I think what will make the program really interesting is if a lot of you who are not creationists, but a lot of you who are uh, evolutionists, call in. And we have a, a spirited debate. You know that'll that'll. Uh, right away, though, of course, my audience will be cringing by the word "evolutionist." Not really a phrase that people apply to themselves generally. That's generally just a uh, a phrase for from the creationists to use. What are you smirking at? Um, uh... <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be so good. This is going to be so <laughs> good already. Be good. Oh, All right, thank you, Matt Buddhist. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Rasputis. I'm stocked up on drinks and household chores, counting on you guys to keep me entertained. All right. Also, for some reason, a bunch of mentions of space goes coast to coast in, in chat, which mm. I don't know if people know. I'm guaranteed they don't because there's no reason they would how big a fan I am of that show and how deeply I loved it and how influential I think it is on the current comedy landscape. And I could go on at some length, but that's not what we're here to talk about today. We're here to talk about... Carl Baugh. We're here to talk about Carl Baugh and and how the Earth was made in, in and his six, um, six thousand years his, ago. His biosphere and his biosphere created. to get us back to the same settings as the Garden of Eden. Yeah, good, great. 
make it zippy and interesting. The guest certainly is zippy and interesting. Dr. Carl Ball, a ball, has been invited as a guest lecturer at NASA headquarters in Greenbelt, Maryland, as a result of... So, no. I, I went looking for that. I, I listened up to the intro. Like, there's no... At no time did Carl Ball go to NASA, at least as best as my research can... If Feel free to, to be research fair, that, said, let me know. Speak as a guest at NASA headquarters maybe had nothing to do with that. NASA is a big place. I've been there, right? It covers many, many square miles of, of area. Who knows who had him there for what reason? Also, uh, I know this was 2002, but I, I, I also just love how Carl Bodge is like, well, NASA, that's the space place people know. Like, NASA is definitely going to want to know about my what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. 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 I made a tent where the pressure is, is higher. <laughs> NASA will want to hear about this. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> this independent research on the world's first hyperbaric there. biosphere. This biosphere is a simulation of the original ecospheric conditions of planet Earth. In his pioneering role as an independent researcher in this field, he is president and CEO of Creation Research Systems, Inc. More than 30 years of his life have been spent researching Earth's atmospheric conditions before the Genesis flood. From this research, he has synthesized the creation in symphony model. Dr. Ball is also director of the Creation Evidence Museum. He began his excavation project on the uh, uh, is it P-A-L-U-X-Y, Luxy River, I guess, in Glen Rose, Texas, back in March of uh, 82 since that time. Ball, along with teams of volunteers, have uncovered over 400 dinosaur tracks and over 80 human footprints in Cretaceous limestone. Hmm. He is the... Disc We're just going to hmm that. Yep. <laughs> just... Good for him. Yeah. He's, he's, Any thoughts? You jump in anytime, my friend. So all, all I was going to say was, uh, so he did He did have a little museum. It's my understanding. It was basically his garage that you could come and look at stuff. Mm -hmm. um, at no point did he ever display these dinosaur footprints, nor the human footprints from the circa the crustacean, crustaceous period. Um, sadly, that though, that didn't come to light. I don't. I don't know why, but. Discoverer and excavation director of two major dinosaurs, one in Texas, one in Colorado. I will not attempt to pronounce them. Several NASA scientists have recognized the scientific significance of the Colorado dinosaur excavation under Ball's direction and have participated in four such excavations under his auspice. Dr. Baugh is co-director of a research team along with Dr. Um, so first we'll do the super chat here. Yes. Sonic Shroom writes, first they need to convince me that there is only one of anything, as I don't see evidence of that anywhere. Oh, only one of any. What Do you know what that relates to, Dave? I don't. As far as I know, there's more than one of everything. All right. Well, Sonic Shroom, let me know. Fo just follow up in a comment. If yeah, if sorry. We don't get your, we don't get you, man. I'm sure it's clever, but uh, we don't get it. Go and then on. second of all, um, oh, what did he just, what was he just talking about? Uh, I lost it. What was he talking about, David? The digs that he's supervised. Oh, right. Yes, yes. Thank you. So uh, in the in the U.S., Dave, unlike Canada, in, in Canada, yeah. if you find a... like, So if you're northern Alberta and you're fracking mm -hmm. away, you come across dinosaur bones. Yeah. You just got to stop the whole thing. Yeah, the world shuts down. Well, and, and who owns the bones? Uh, I assume the government, but the government, I don't. The government oh. just owns the bones. Yeah. Yeah. That would be the very Canadian way to do it. It's like, this is all in, government stuff now. Thank you. Yeah. In many of the states, including Montana, where a lot of the finds happen, um, if you privately own the land and privately find it, you right. just get to keep the dinosaur stuff. Yeah. So it actually doesn't... I kind of believe in its own way that perhaps he was involved in some of these, like involved with some excavations with some private people because... I mean, for example, there's a there is a giant allosaur at the answer, at the Creation Museum in Kentucky that was like found on private land of a wealthy Christian person who found the so then they gave it to Ken Ham, right? Um, yeah. So that's a thing that can happen in the U.S. So it's actually it's possible that these uh, that he did go on some of these digs. I'm not totally discounting. Yeah. 
now that we are drinking buddies, Tim, please, not Timothy. No more Timothy. You bet, Tim. Good job, Tim. Cheers. Dr. Don Shockley has been searching for Noah's Ark on Mount Ararat in Turkey. As a matter of fact, he personally negotiated a 49 year lease of Mount Ararat with the Turkish government during uh, the administration of one of the presidents there. Other expeditions include ex. ex <laughs> I have. I didn't research that one. I have so many questions about that. <laughs> but I'm also <laughs> given some of the corruption and crazy things that have happened in Turkey. I'm not willing to 100% discount it. That oh, for sure. You might have negotiated that with some official at some point that is in no way, and they're just like, "Yep, absolutely." <laughs> just right. that's ten thousand American dollars. You've got a 49 year lease to Mount Ararat. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, I completely, I actually, in a way that, that sounds more plausible than some of his things. Cause I like the way it was phrased with, well, with one of the administrations that they had there, yeah, yeah, kind of like, yeah, they were in power for a month and they, uh, issued some, <laughs> yeah, good luck uh, trying to cash in on that. Yeah. Excavating an Indian princess for the archaeology department of the university of Texas and a radio broadcast from atop Cheops pyramid in egypt Do i wonder what time of year he did that i was there and it was really hot uh he's also led three scientific did you know dave that he's been to egypt <laughs> yeah there's our very first like you know <laughs> i went to eat waiting for him to work out to work into the conversation the fact that he got to go on the tour that normal people don't get to go on <laughs> That's right. yeah if those of you who've been watching the show have heard this this trope already a few times where art likes to let people know. Mm -hmm. Just like sometimes I talk about Star Wars. It's art's thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Expeditions into the rainforests of Papua New Guinea in search of living pterodactyls. Dr. Baugh is the author of three books. Pterodactyls there, Dave. Yeah. Living, li li living pterodactyls. I, I, yeah, living pterodactyls. Yeah. In Papua yes, New Guinea, I, where they, where I, they are. Now, now this is ringing a bell a little bit. This guy believes dinosaurs still live, right? Correct. Okay. Yeah. I I think I have heard of this guy before. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Folks, why do men believe evolution against all odds? Against all odds. Dinosaur scientific evidence that man and dinosaurs walk together and panorama of creation and the host of a weekly television program, Creation in the 21st Century on... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. Did Art just say in the face of all evidence? This man in the face. Believes. So no. So um, so Carl Vaugh, he was listing the three books that Carl Vaugh had written, and one of them was um why one of the titles of the books was why do people believe in evolution in the face of all odds? That's the name okay. of Carl's book. So um, honestly, I I missed the part. Okay, yeah. So now I didn't look this up myself. But according to Wikipedia, which is always correct, not always correct, but in 2001, so before this, slightly before this aired, uh, Carl Baugh was featured on The Daily Show in a okay. segment. The Daily Show went to his museum um, and were mocking him, apparently t getting him to say things like that the Flintstones was real. Right. Yeah. Was a thing. Can, so I yes, because Carl has that book. These all these evidence, the evidence that humans and dinosaurs lived at the same yeah. time. So, yeah, I actually would love to. If anyone has that episode of the Daily Show where Carl Baugh is on, I would love to see that. Trinity, Trinity Broadcast Network. So this is going to be a very, 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 very interesting program. If you will simply remain seated, ah, oh, you could stand. You can stand, Dave. You'll be off frame. I prefer to sit. Yeah. Oh, that's well, well, that's well, Doctor Ball. Welcome Thunder back to the program. Of... Art, it's Thunder a pleasure to be with you as I uh, lecture lecture across the country. I often travel until late in the night or early in the morning, and I've found that you have a varied, extensive, and faithful audience coast to coast. <laughs> um, I'm curious, in some of the places that you speak, Doctor, uh, do you run into some of my listeners? Oh, yes. 
Uh, yes, uh, quite frequently. In fact, uh, people listen to you in the mountains. Uh, I excavate dinosaurs, as you know. I dig dinosaurs. Yes. And, and the data that I that my office sent to you is that that was a joke. Yeah, I dig dinosaurs. Ba bit old. It's now 11 different dinosaurs that my team has excavated. And I find people in remote areas, especially enjoying your program, it adds some variety to their life. And then in urban areas, I um, uh, people often come up and say, have you been on the Art Bell show? Yes, but it's been a while. <laughs> and uh, they say, well, we listen regularly. Do you, uh, I, well, what I was really curious about, uh, if you speak in front of groups, do you ever get uh, people who listen to this program, asking you about the possibility of alien intervention. Uh, I mean, it's obviously a question we deal with here from time to time, and I was just wondering if you ever get, you know, an Art Bell person on the audience raising their hand, isn't it possible, Doctor? Well, normally they come up to me privately, and uh -huh. they, they do ask the question. Uh, and my answer to that is that's beyond my area of expertise. And uh, as you read a moment ago, the biographical sketch, I've lived a pretty busy life, and I've hardly had time to search for aliens. All right. Well, listen, I, I want to ask you a little bit about the... All right. Well, you're here to talk about your thing, but I thought maybe I could get you to talk about the thing that I'm interested in, but yeah. okay. <laughs> what, do you think about, uh, what do you think about aliens? Yeah. <laughs> and thanks, Shannon. Other... I dig you, too. Yep. I'm chop liver. First hyperbaric biosphere another I, i'm taking it that this was an attempt to create or recreate conditions that you have probably figured out one way or the other existed on earth at the time that life began or during that period is, is that was that the idea yes i i think you've got it right and uh, uh, i think rather than a recreation since i was not there nor my colleagues uh, none of my colleagues were there to monitor the context we take a lot of this by inference, but it is all documentable. Uh, hopefully, there will be time to discuss the parameters. When uh, when life was... Okay. <laughs> Look, we're this is all inference. We're making this up. But we've documented it. Yep. <laughs> it's... Okay. It's very well, important. Let's... <laughs> carry, yeah. carry on. Yeah. Is much more luxuriant than uh, we enjoy today when longevity was uh, the principle of life from reptiles all the way to man, the original context of planet Earth. In fact, that's the reason NASA had me there to lecture to their scientists and engineers. Mm. And uh, I've received three overtures since lecturing there that there is interest in some areas of NASA's research uh, in using uh, these data and in using this technology in deep space exploration. Well, it's, ob it's obvious why NASA would be interested. I mean, uh, if you can understand how life began uh, here on Earth, then you can understand how it might begin elsewhere. So, of what course, they'd be interested. Well, he's still talking about his biosphere, which is... I've heard him talk about this biosphere before. I don't know what to talk about it today, but it's essentially... He's, he makes these, you know, tents. Right. <laughs> uh, and he he somehow arranges it so that the pressure is much higher. Like 1.5 right. G or something. Yeah, so many atmospheres. No, that's, that's gravitational force, but, but I, I don't... Anyway, and also that the oxygen mix is much higher. So it's like it... Right, yeah. Instead of 10 to 12% or whatever is now, it's, you know, 18% or something like like that. Right, yeah. It's like, it's really just, it is just a hyperbaric chamber. Yeah. As best I can tell. But hyperbaric chambers maybe weren't as popular then, although Michael Jackson was using them. I don't know. I get the the ramped up oxygen part. Yeah, I mean, it being like, like, well, you know, it was all, the world was all jungle. There was a lot of, a lot more plants. So we got all this oxygen floating around, I suppose, can is I, the logic behind can I, it. Can I give you a spoiler or do you want to save it? Yeah. No, oh, I guess this is gonna come. I, I guess yeah. Maybe we should we should save it. I should stop trying. All right. To, well, there's you know, bury the lead. Yeah. I assume he's gonna. It's it's delicious. But we'll we'll get. Yeah. I'm sure we'll get there. We'll um, get into it. Yeah. This is the whole yeah. thing he's here to talk about. So yeah, we don't want to steal um, his thunder. Also, so apparently, what he did at NASA was they. He was lecturing. Them. Mm -hmm. They're interesting. Giving lectures technology. at NASA. But, mm -hmm. Yeah. 
because this using it presumably you can also live a really long time like dinosaurs did and like uh you know the people in in genesis who frequently mm. lived several hundred years so many spoils are spoilers i want to give you but we'll just let it happen all right arrested but but what i want to know is I was, I was I was starting I was trying to figure out if I could spoil Black Panther for you, but I'm just going to leave that go. There, there was go, actually a biosphere tomorrow. created. What happened? What were the conditions that uh, were set up inside this biosphere? Okay, and again, this is an academic research project. Yes, I understand. A and NASA's interest to art is actually uh, more uh, direct than um, than uh, examining the issues of whether life can evolve or develop uh, on uh, foreign soil. The basic idea is the survival of our astronauts in deep space. You see. Uh, there are problems with the loss of brain mass. Uh, there are problems with the loss of musculature. Uh -huh. But there is a greater problem in renewable food supply. You just can hardly build uh, a space rocket big enough, a capsule big enough to include all of the food that would be necessary to get them there, uh, get them to thrive while they colonize or explore, and to get them back. Uh, you, back you'd, you'd have to grow your own. Uh, but 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 again, Doctor, what I'm asking about is this biosphere uh, that was created, right? That's correct. Yes, uh, we I, have over 50 scientists, educators, and engineers involved in the research project. Yes, and okay. we have a workable biosphere online. And now we're building there's a lot very... more educators in that 50 than there are scientists <laughs> and engineers. <laughs> Just throwing that out there. So uh, when you go to lecture NASA and you say, hey, you know what? Stuff grows better when there's more oxygen. And they uh, say, okay. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> no. <laughs> Thank you for attending my TED talk. <laughs> There's no uh, way his tent, his tent, has <laughs> 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 set up it. <laughs> has some proprietary <laughs> thing that they, yeah. You call it a call it a space tent. Well, <laughs> now the future's tent. here. Uh, I don't know. Who, so he does like he he brings one of the things he's done on the shows is like he brings out giant tomatoes and say, "Look at this tomato I grew where the oxygen there was more oxygen." Okay, okay. Um, uh, yeah. large one, sixty-two feet long, eleven feet in diameter. And I have to tell you, Dave, he thinks that yep. dinosaurs are just old reptiles who didn't stop I was going to say is he one of those crazy people that believes that's like well if any like an iguana lives long enough it just it becomes a yes becomes a, know, like a triceratops because it yeah. just it, it never just cuz they growing. never stop growing through their life so if Correct. it lives 2000 years well you're going to get that is uh -huh. that is his hypothesis yeah that is that is something i've heard suggested yeah okay <laughs> okay mm -hmm. yeah oh Mikel Money. Mikel J. Money. Mikel I'm J. Happy Money. To see you live. I'm not an atheist yet, but moving that way. Thanks so much, Paul. Also, Dave's cute too. Ah, oh, shucks. I don't know what the two means in that sentence. Dave is cute for sure. And uh, assume it means be... he's referring to Shannon in this case, because he's oh, sure not talking about you. <laughs> well, you can't see Art or Carl right now, so yeah. yeah. That's that's true. Car yeah. Carl's a looker. Um, you don't have to be an atheist for to 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 enjoy this show. Not everyone, even on the panel, is necessarily an atheist. We don't know, so uh, yeah. But uh, usually, this is this is about fun conspiracy things. But tonight, the conspiracy is a brand of creation creationism that Ken Ham thinks is dangerous. So <laughs> yeah, buckle this up. Is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that guy, he's crazy. Uh, what and, and exactly what are the conditions inside? The conditions are those that we find uh, the geophysicists and uh, environmentalists have found to have been current in the past uh, when Earth was young. Now, we might discuss when Earth was young on the program, but that's not the issue at the moment. In direct answer to your question, number one, we know that the Earth's diameter was smaller in the past. And uh, uh, geophysics. Do we know that, Paul? I don't know that. 
<laughs> I don't know yes or no. I mean, yeah. I'm pretty sure the prevailing theory is that there were several, at the very least, one fairly massive collision fairly early in Earth's history, which was what formed the moon, that mm -hmm. something like Mars-sized crashed into the Earth. Right. Uh, so and, I assume yeah. that much mass would have had an actual impact on the diameter of the Earth. So in that way, I guess that's probably true. Is it is it in the way that like every time you paint your room, technically it's smaller? I mean, I guess, yeah, yeah. We keep uh, throwing extra garbage on here, and it, I don't know, maybe sooner or later. Just have also, recognized that for some time. I also suspect that what he considers to be the conditions on Earth when it was young are very different from what, say, a reputable scientist. <laughs> Would well, consider to be the conditions of the Earth when it was young, which would be mostly Carl agrees fire and formal, no breathable atmosphere. And void, that's what he thinks. Well, there you go. Yeah. Mm. Time, the Earth has expanded in diameter. If you diminish the size of the globe, maintaining the same mass but shrinking the volume, right? You automatically invoke the universal law of gravitation, which means that you, if you diminish the diameter ten to twelve percent, you automatically double. The atmospheric pressure by gravitational attraction. Do you oh. follow what I'm saying? Uh, I... <laughs> that is <laughs> absolutely not okay, how that. So, <laughs> but Dave, by the laws, by the laws, yeah. the universal laws of attraction. Yeah. When you shrink the diameter, yeah, the say it's the, ten to twelve percent, the the pressure goes up. Yeah. Um, I mean, do I have to explain the fact that <laughs> mass remains constant no matter what the size is? And if you shrink mm. something down to a physically smaller, he actually area, specified. He specified that the mass stays constant. Yeah, yeah, and therefore the gravity will not change. And also, um, the diameter of the Earth is not necessarily going to affect the diameter of the atmosphere. No. And it would no. be the diameter of the atmosphere. And like... would be... And so if... Even if the, the ground... So if the ground shrinks, and presumably the atmosphere... For some reason, the outer, like the outer layer of the atmosphere stays where it was, so the inner layer mm -hmm. goes down more. I don't really understand how that would work or what would be the physics behind yeah. that but let's just say that it happened there's still the same amount of atmosphere we haven't suddenly made more air it doesn't it just well, magic up so in that scenario the pressure would go down because there's more volume yes the, the volume you would, of you the would atmosphere be had to increase. more of a vacuum than you know yeah so but he just asked art it's just as i pause did that make sense to art let me let's let's find out if that made sense to art yeah. Absolutely, yes. Now, what this gives Absolutely, you is yes. a hyperbaric. Well, there you go. It made sense to Art. Maybe Art's, mm. maybe Art's a more educated man than you and I. Context. Are. So, in other words, the, no, uh, the amount of oxygen, for example, would have been double the density. Well, it's better than that. Better. By increasing the oxygen okay. only wait, slightly, the ratio of oxygen only. Because uh, Michael just brought a point in time that air in mines is more dense than the surface. This, this is what he's getting at. It's it, This is true. Like, the farther down you go, it is uh, air gets denser. There are more atmospheres of pressure the farther down you go because there is more air on top of you pushing down. But if you just shrink the whole surface of the world 10 to 12 percent, the atmosphere would just shrink with it. It doesn't – you don't have more atmosphere piling up on top. Like, so you, air pressure does work that way. The deeper you go, the more air pressure there is. But if you just drop everything down that much, well, all of the air also goes. It only works if most of the air surface stays where it was. Like if a section of the earth dropped, you know, like a mile down to the surface, yes, absolutely. The air pressure down at the bottom of that pit would be significantly higher. Anyways. 
Yes. Slightly, can, can, but doubling the atmospheric pressure. At Texas A&M University, they found that if you double the atmospheric pressure and right. slightly enrich the oxygen, right. you triple the assimilation of available oxygen. Now, that's incredible. You, you triple, see, wait a minute, you triple the assimilation of available that's oxygen. That's correct, but it requires the pressure. What's a unit of assimilation, Dave? Uh, I believe they're measured in Borgs. <laughs> we I love when they, they come on. We we've we've done something on something that is no unit of measurement. We've tripled it. Well, oh, we tripled like, it. We've we've tripled the understanding. Oh, have we? I okay. assume the actual thing would be it would be whatever parts per million of blood of oxygen in your blood. I, 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 mean, I don't really blood. know how you measure it. You're actually, yeah. you are you are looking ahead correctly if I know what he's talking about. But I assume that's what he's talking about. Your your blood absorbs more oxygen. Yeah. Which isn't necessarily what you want, but that's what no. you care for. But that is, so. as far as I understand, uh, that's the for actual instance, the hemoglobin right in the blood is saturated with oh, four right. oxygen molecules, and uh, you can't you can't improve. Oh. New technology, tricky. No matter how much oxygen you run through the respiratory system, you can't improve on four uh, uh, oxygen molecules being assimilated, but. If you nearly double the atmospheric pressure, then the additional pressure drives the oxygen into the blood plasma. That's the secret. All right. Well, uh, what happens when either humans or plant life or whatever is in this uh, early cre creation of uh, the way it used to be? What, what happens? Well, first of all, uh, the oxygen assimilation is driven through the blood system to the deep cell tissue, and that solves the problem of the dinosaurs. You see, dinosaurs had very small lung capacities. I've directed the excavation of 11 of these creatures. Small lungs. Small lungs. And in today's atmospheric context, they couldn't get enough oxygen to uh -huh. feed the deep cell tissue of their bodies. Ah, uh ha, -huh. So with, the, with, the, with double the density uh, or, or double the pressure, double the pressure. Then, then they could have smaller lungs and get enough oxygen. But in t today, a dinosaur would uh, get dizzy and fall over and die. Oh, it would be very lethargic to say the least. So when we double the atmospheric pressure and slightly enrich the oxygen, only slightly, our, um, most people say, oh, well, let's double the atmospheric pressure. You can't do that because you build up oxygen toxicity, especially if you're simultaneously doubling the atmospheric pressure. Yeah, but in Jurassic Park, they were running fast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And we're just Art stole my thunder. Park. I was going to make a Jurassic Park joke, but you know. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, like, birds also have small lungs. Yeah. Um, and they somehow they manage. Do dinosaurs have small lungs? And this is also like I just I've not I've not I'm not aware of this as a fact. Yeah. Um, I've certainly never heard this presented before, but you have spent a great deal more time researching matters. I have, and I, it's, it's than not I have. a, uh, <laughs> it's not, it's not a, it's not something that I've heard people concerned about. That, that are literally like, well, how would dinosaurs live today if uh, if they were around? Like, whether their lungs would be too small? Because I think most people who most paleontologists I fully agree that the atmosphere was different then. Like that things were different then. So yes. if you want to, if you want to, if the physics, if the biology of the animal doesn't make sense under current oxygen, you know, rates or whatever, no, no one's concerned. Well, then these creatures can't have lived. <laughs> like, right. Because 65 million years ago. We're not we're not making the assumption that everything was exactly the way that it was the mixture now, so. of gases was similar to what right. it is now, right? What it does seem to be a problem for though is for a guy who's going looking for pterodactyls and brontosaurs in the in the in the jungle, yeah. and near the well, Amazon. Yeah, why are you expecting that these things? Because <laughs> I mean. Anyway. Like this it is anecdotal, but I've certainly seen many uh, dinosaur skeletons in my life. Uh, I don't remember ever looking and being like, "Wow, that rib cage looks really small." 
And, you know, they like, seem proportional to like at least the the you know the ones walking on the hind legs the in the Tyrannosaurus class they they seem proportional to birds, to yeah, or trees. even like a like a Stegosaurus or a Triceratops or something oh, for like sure. that, right? Like and, and, uh, they look right, like uh, what you you know a scaled up cow or any large right. mammal kind of and the sauropods of, even more so like the sauropods yeah, they have they have big wide cages yeah yeah I. This is not the dinosaur problem I was looking to solve, anyway. Yeah. We're yeah. under, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, there's a lot of dream work yeah, going know, on, I and I think the parent organization is, is the right uh, title. Do you think, uh, but do, do I you think doctor, that, intrigued. do you think, doctor, excuse me, that if, um, I mean, you're, you're out there digging up dinosaurs. Yes, and searching for living dinosaurs, as you read. Well, that, that I know, but that that one seems more of a stretch. Although you never know. Um, you, you remember that photograph? You do know what? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Everybody knows. We would we would like people would would, would be like, oh shit, look at that dinosaur. They're not. <laughs> it's either like a a parrot we thought was extinct or. Like a colacanth or something, right? You know, right. A, a pterodactyl. We would, you'd, you'd see that. People would see that. There's no place on the earth so remote that we wouldn't notice, you know, giant fucking flying lizards. Right. Um, everyone's got cell phones now. Like, just doesn't matter what tribe in Africa you're going to, they got a camera. Yeah, satellites were very much a thing then with cameras all over them. We had pretty good pictures of the entire surface of the world. But it was funny because Art didn't, clearly he doesn't want to talk about, he doesn't want to talk about this living dinosaur thing. <laughs> uh, yeah. as, what do they call it? The cryptoids? Cryptoids? Uh, oh. Um, oh man, now, oh. Oh, we'll my think head of it cold, in the, making me fuzzy. Or someone in the chat, but someone in the chat will remind us. Cryptozoology, the, cryptids, cryptids, cryptozoology, yeah, cryptids. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's clearly had guests on about cryptids. I've, oh yeah, I've heard. Yeah, yeah. So, but but here he's like, yeah, I don't even want to. But he didn't. But that I think he was thinking about. Oh, I've had this. I've had other guests come on and talk about this. So I guess I better not just dismiss it out of hand. Yeah. Right now. Fine. All right. Did I show that to you, the one in New York, Paradoctyl? Uh, yeah, I don't think so. Really? Really? Um, Keith, if you're listening, please, once again, put that up for my... Uh, you have a computer where you are, I trust? Uh, not in this room. The oh. computer's in my office, but I visualize quite readily. Um, all right, well, this was a, a photograph taken uh, during the 9-11 crisis. And just, just describe the photograph to me. Yeah. I, I visualize things well. We're good. All right. I mean, I'm is, curious to hear is. how a how a <laughs> photograph of the 9/11 crisis is in any way relating to this topic. And this giant paradoxal, apparently, uh, <laughs> you'd have to see the photograph, and and uh, maybe d during a break you'll have like 15 minutes. I mean, you could go in and take a look, right? Well, it's across okay, so you uh, the county to oh, my that's, office. That's too bad. All right. So you're ser searching for live ones, but what I was going to ask is, with regard to the dead ones. Um, would it be possible, uh, if you got something fresh enough to extract DNA? Mm -hmm. To clone it. Well, that's, that's where I was ultimately going. But, I mean, can you get the DNA? Or is it too damaged? The DNA is damaged. Well, that's a, that's a tautology of a question. Because if you got one fresh enough, could you get DNA? Is yes. If it was fresh enough, I could get the DNA, right? Yeah. If it is in fossilized form. Now, I have heard some reports, unverified reports, that uh, unfossilized dinosaur bone and unfossilized blood has been found. Really? In, uh, in some context, dinosaur context, but I've. No, it has not. <laughs> he, 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 is... he at least threw out, you know, well, it's unverified. I've heard this, though. Anyways, Paul, I want some dinosaur blood. All I will say is watch my many videos on this because what they have found, Dave, did you know that blood contains iron? I was aware, yes. 
did you know that under certain conditions, uh, sometimes all of the blood can biodegrade away, but the iron doesn't? I uh, I mean, it makes sense when you say it. Yeah. And then and yeah. then that iron that is left behind is still roughly in the shape of blood cells, Dave. Okay. Yeah. And, and that's what they find. They find iron in the shape of blood cells, and they go, "Look, it's blood." It's like, well, no, no, it's not. It's not blood. It's yeah. Anyway, do you know Paul? Crazy. Yes. If I had dinosaur blood, I'm pretty sure I could turn into a supervillain. And this is what I want. Okay, tell me more. Um, I think I would probably turn into some sort of half man, half lizard, and grow a tail, and maybe get amazing regenerative powers. Maybe the ability to control other lizards with my mind. I don't know. It's a little up in the air. More research okay. has to be done. But um, all would tremble before me. So, I was going to say you don't necessarily need that to be a supervillain, but the the processes I was thinking of would merely make you a villain. Just being a you know an evil person can get you. You want to be the super, or villain. possibly I would get some sort of horrible um, disease <laughs> and just sort of die um, after a very painful death. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a bunch of animal blood into my right. blood. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I can't I can't. Just the hybridization. Just sign yourself up to be a chimera right off the bat. That's mm -hmm. early stages. Cool. You just get reports like they found this or that, but it's quite elusive. I would like to see that. If we had unfossilized relative. Yeah, if, if Carl if Carl's kind of saying this is sketchy, <laughs> then it's probably yeah. not solid. <laughs> the, the guy that Ken Ham thinks is crazy. <laughs> Says, yep. nah, I don't know about this one. <laughs> so now we're hitting the real. <laughs> oh, those guys? Yeah, those guys are nuts. Yeah, I'd like to see the that dinosaur, myself. But the dinosaur blood people? <laughs> Watch out for those guys. <laughs> Shysters. Fresh dinosaur bone, mm -hmm. and with the extraction of DNA, we still run up against a real problem. You see, Jurassic Park 1 it was an intriguing idea, and I was extremely intrigued. But uh, nature and life are so specific that you can't use a frog egg uh, in which to place the DNA of a dinosaur because they are very distinctive. Right. It aborts. So I think that's a fair criticism of Jurassic Park, if that's what we're doing now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that Maybe frogs that possibly... isn't the most closely related thing that they could have picked. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so do you, have you heard of osteocytes, Dave? Um, is that, that condition where your bone doesn't have enough calcium when you get older? No, that's osteoporosis, but it's similar to related, I think. Then, uh, no, I have not. Um, osteocytes, uh, boy, now I'm going to lose, I, I don't want to get the science wrong, but it's related to DNA. There, there it's, it's proteins and enzymes related to DNA. And, okay. it, and and the closer the thing about the, the closer the species are the to each other the closer you can use the osteocytes of other species it's just kind of a thing that they can use to test okay and dr mary schweitzer when she was looking at soft tissue dinosaur type stuff uh for for some of the enzymes and things that have kind of survived um the the they, they ran a slew of tests just to see which osteocytes would best bind with the dinosaur fossil stuff they found. And the one that bonded best was not like alligators and things, but actually ostriches. They were finding that ostrich osteocytes um, were, were the best binding. So the, 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 the suggestion being that would they ever get that far, they should actually maybe look to ostrich or something similar to DNA as the replacement, to, not like frogs. Not like frogs. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. I think most people, if they're conducting a scientific critique of Jurassic World, probably don't get <laughs> yeah. super hung up on the frog egg part of it. No, and I think the frog thing, yeah. if I remember even if I remember correctly, that detail was different in the book and it was something they put in the movie because they wanted these dinosaurs to be recreating. Yes. And they picked frogs because certain frogs can Oh now I got I have actually read the books, but I have read the books, but I, yeah, I don't remember them super, super well. I'm not a huge yeah. Michael Crichton fan. I 
find his writing fairly mediocre. Mm. But good, he's a good idea guy. That that's exactly it. He's good for coming up with cool ideas. Yeah, not the best at implementing. Right. Them. If he could somehow hand those off to a better Billy really and the Clonosaurus. <laughs> It's self destruct Would there be any living animal uh, in the world right now with which you might be able to do something like that? Uh, probably an elephant with a, to a mastodon or a mammoth because uh -huh. they are the same proboscidae classification. Okay. And they're essentially the same. And I think the uh, Siberian experiment to clone and revive a living mammoth or mastodon, and the big mastodon was larger still, I think is a viable project. Yes, but and, dinosaurs, and you, no, unless we can find a living one. Do you think it's a good idea? Uh, you mean the mammoth or dinosaur? Well, no, I mean to bring back something that nature has uh, caused, yeah, well, well go, caused to go extinct. If we are prepared to uh, take care of those creatures, well, I think it would be an intriguing idea. Uh, for instance, uh, I've led three expeditions into the jungles of Papua New Guinea. We have over two dozen eyewitness accounts of living pterodactyls. Uh, we had uh, had some friends there within the last few weeks searching. <laughs> Not, unfortunately, any photographs. <laughs> no photographs film or anything like that but oh yes all of these all of these people definitely saw it or in our well, scientific three, expedition it, yeah. dave i don't know how you can three accounts man the trouble was all of the film went, we put it through the x-ray machine at the airport mm. <laughs> you know it was it mm -hmm. used to people today don't they don't get it that used to be a real problem when you were traveling and yeah he didn't pay for the good film canisters and <laughs> You know, it's yeah, like, it's ah, yeah. the Kodak film costs so much more. What's the point? And it's, yeah, well, yeah. Now, now you or just we got exposed. Now we, we accidentally took two pictures over top of each other because that was mm -hmm. that could happen. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. All right. Pterodactyls in the Congo. But pterodactyls. No, no, this was Papua New Guinea. Oh, Papua New Guinea. Yep. For them. They did not make a sighting, but when we were there in 97, when our team was there working in conjunction with the government, and it was a scientific expedition, we made five sightings of creatures after dark that could not be explained by natural means and were consistent with the reports of the nationals and the following. So I have a problem with the phrase cannot cannot be explained by natural means it's like yeah. well even if you couldn't carl i understand you specified three times that this was a scientific expedition and not just a bunch of americans who went to papua new guinea mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i don't know exactly what classified it is scientific we all drive we couldn't explain it we spent um, like three <laughs> nights around the fire yeah uh which is just similar to again even in the the claims of the soft tissue quote-unquote soft tissue not which is soft in dinosaurs well it's just like well we know that we know that this can't last this long well, well how do you know that like yeah. call me in a billion years and, let, and then tell me that it can't last it yeah following <sighs> morning we found two webbed footprints on the sandy beach with uh, depression of a tail, the, the footprints were about 14 inches apart. Wow. Depression of a tail with a flange on the end. Really? Now, in biological nature, the only creatures other than marine creatures that have ever been discovered scientifically or cataloged scientifically with a flange on the tail were rampharynchid pterodactyls. So we're on to something. And if and when we are able... So... There was marks in the sand. Yep. That we are we are to say not that perhaps the mark in the sand was made by something other than a flange tail. Nope. It was a flange no. tail. We are instead supposed to say, no, this is clearly can only be flange tail and yep. and we know that the scientifically discovered, unlike just regularly discovered animals. <laughs> yes. There's only Talking there's about only you, one. Model. you get the hell out of here. And it's pterodactyls. Mm -hmm. Okay. One particular yes. type of pterodactyl is the only creature, the non-aquatic creature that's ever had a flange tail. <laughs> yeah. And the line in the sand told me so. Perfect. Yeah. To 
capture these or retrieve some eggs. Uh, I hold a permit from the U.S. Department of Agriculture to bring these into the United States. Huh. I say if and when because the logistics are very complicated and uh, I've had over two years. <laughs> logistics so of finding this imaginary creature is very complicated. <laughs> So you're telling me that he pre he got pre authorized permits. Yeah, he went in and said, "Look, if I find pterodactyl eggs, can I bring them home?" They're like, "Yeah, man," <laughs> but it's uh, it's, uh, there is the matter of the pterodactyl egg fee. It has to be up front. That's two thousand dollars. Yeah, I feel like someone at the U.S. Customs Agency had a great story when they went home that night. It's like, mm -hmm. Look, I I just took 150 bucks from a dude who wanted authoriz pre authorization. Yeah. Oh, I don't think we need to worry about receipts on this one, my man. <laughs> this is all cool. <laughs> all right. If anyone gives you a hassle, you just tell them Link that it was okay. We're cool, buddy. All right. Well, all right. <laughs> He's thinking ahead because, you know, that's a he confident is. guy. He's crossing he his teeth and nodding his eyes. That's a scientific mind like, right there. I'm not worried about whether or not I'm going to find these things. My worry is how am I going to get these things home? Yeah, that's the... that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to legally be able to get them in the States when I find my living pterodactyls. <laughs> From Texas A&M that they would like to incubate yeah, and house these. I can just see you coming through customs trying to explain that one. Well, if you have the permit in advance, yeah, it shouldn't be a real problem. <laughs> but a greater problem is dealing with the microbes in these uh, ecological contexts. You know, we're dealing with a lot of bugs. By bugs, I mean microbes. Yes. That uh, can be rather harmful and lethal. So we have to be very, very careful. This project may never be realized, but at least uh, it's underway. Wouldn't the what? microbes just be the same microbes we have in the world? Like, they live in the world, right? That, that was my... They're, they're in New Guinea right now. Like, do the eggs form? Yeah. Look, this is going to hatch to be a deadly, deadly, two-meter-long bird dinosaur. But I mean, wash your hands. Fair, it's kind of deadly. Like but any, wash your... <laughs> anyone with a rifle or a shotgun will be perfectly safe. But, but wash your hands. That's the real problem here. We're gonna... Yeah. Or maybe wash the the lizard. I don't know. I'm uh, a <laughs> hard time figuring out which which side. I would think probably the pterodactyl should be more worried about what microbes it's going to be exposed to. I would think so. Right. We're going to yeah. squirt it full of sanitizer. Taking it out of the jungles of Papua New Guinea and taking it to the States, it's going to be exposed to a lot of things that, you know, it wouldn't be. True. True, yeah, there's not, not as much smog there. Yeah, make sure it has its smallpox vaccine. Well, good thing good thing we had the bellwether of the one that was we didn't get the story of, but was clearly flying around on 9-11. I found the picture. Oh, did you? Oh, yeah. I don't think we can put it up on the screen. We, in our new software, I don't think we have the... Uh, let's see here. I'll... Uh, this isn't... Uh, okay, well, this isn't great, but... I mean, I don't know for sure. I think this is the uh, here. I'll I'll, I'll just uh, I'll just message are, it. Are to you, you are you messaging it to me in the yeah. in the Zuckerberg special? Yeah. All right. Oh. Well, all I can do is hold up my phone. Jamie, can you find a picture of a pterodactyl in in uh... There's the That's... pterodactyl. Well, at least make yourself full screen if you're doing if you're doing that. No, oh, nobody. Well, can see I don't it. know that that helps anybody. Because if I if I go close, my my stupid phone won't focus unless it's like by my face. Anyway, you can go probably go find that on Google yourself. Perfect. Yeah, just Google nine eleven uh, pterodactyl picture. You'll find it. There just it like is. I am. Clearly, like that, there's. I don't see any way that could be photoshopped. All right. So clearly, if we're making notes for the technology in future shows, yep. 
Well, the ability one, to to the ability to to uh, randomly put up photos that we want to share with people will be next on the technology list. Yeah, but look how the Here's chat is on the screen for people over here in a, in a completely illeg illegible format. But it looks cool. But it's it the real cool. chat. That's the real chat, people. That's the real chat. Also, uh, when I cranked up the volume on the. The, the, you guys weren't here for this, but part of why we were late is because I had to way crank up the gain on the audio of Art of Carl Baugh here, and it's making the the dancey lines cover my face, which I understand most of you appreciate, but not Michael. He thinks you're cute too, or am mm. I cute too? I don't know. You're, he thinks we're both. You're cute, cute too, yeah. but we yeah. are uncertain, unclear as to who the first cute person is. So. <laughs> Sorry, I just saw a comment by Stephanie Helms that it made me laugh. This one? Yeah. Oh, bless. <laughs> I think that was meant to be a Gesundheit joke, but also bless your heart would have would fit in that uh, in that sense. All right, carrying on. Uh, again, I had, uh, I, you know, I, I even with a oh, permit. Not, it's tangential, but on. I had I had a great aunt who was a nun, a Catholic nun, and that was essentially her way of saying "fuck you." Was, <laughs> was oh God bless you. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, bless. Bless your heart. Oh, bless you. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's like, how they use it in the South. Yeah. The state Crash your car, Auntie Eleanor. Oh, bless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. Permit these days, we live in pretty strange times. And uh, if you talk about uh, eggs of something uh, prehistoric and little bugs and things that might be very dangerous for humans, you, you wouldn't want to say all that as you came through. You just want to hand them the permit and say, <laughs> listen, try not to drop that egg, huh? <laughs> You're right. When I, when I was obtaining the permit uh, through the U.S. Department of Agriculture, uh, the supervisor said, well, these are not on the endangered species list. So uh, <laughs> I did acquire the permit, but whether or not it'll ever be realized is another question. All right, not, what I'd like to do, uh, Doctor. Not I another mean, question. <laughs> it's an easily answered question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, you will not. No, yeah. no you will not. There, there are no pterodactyls. You'd be cool too, Shannon. Uh. All right. Well, that was the uh, that was the 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 half hour break. Off we go. And so this oh, this episode, this episode, they usually start with callers, and I actually edited out. They didn't have any interesting callers today, so we went straight into the guest. I'm hoping that if we are swift enough, that we can get to the callers at the end who want to press Carl's feet to the fire. So hopefully we get okay. that far. Well, I'll right. ask you some fairly rapid fire questions. Would that be all right? Oh, certainly. All right. Uh, when did man, uh, in your estimation, and or with the best scientific evidence you have, first walk on the earth? How how many years ago? If we're speaking scientifically, not with a preconceived uh, idea in mind, and in the past, uh, as I've been on your program before, you know that I was an evolutionist, believe and taught the theory of evolution. But that is absolute speculation. If we go... This feels like it was meant to be a rapid fire question, and the answer should have been in the in the form of a number. Yeah, I mean, he specifically used the phrase "rapid fire." <laughs> also, Paul, both rapid of my fire. drinks are empty. Oh, I need to also fill drinks. So, okay, we might have a problem well, here then. No, just mute yourself while you. Are are oh? Do you want me to switch to solo mode? Well, whichever way you want to do it. If we both need to take, do we need to tag off? I can go over no, to Phil. Yeah, you, I'll, 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 I'll listen to the rapid fire questions. You go get your drink. Okay. I don't want to miss these rapid fire questions though, because that sounds going to be fascinating. But anyways, oh, well, then, I'm I'm gonna, then I'm going to interact. No, you go get your drink. I'm going to go solo mode and I'm going to drink with, I'm going to interact with the chat. Yes. Okay. Hello, chat. This is something I can do with this new layout, with my new thing. It's the Monty Python Albatross sketch, but with a new game. <laughs> Tranodon, so I was like, yes, Tyractor. Yes, I love it. Thank you, Matt White. How is everyone today? Does everyone have questions or comments on Carl Baugh? Actually, the other thing I should say, for those of you who don't remember, uh, there's a YouTuber named Logic, who I have worked with before, and he's a great guy, and Logic was instrumental in me discovering my own voice on YouTube and that kind of thing. Anyway, 
logic before he ever covered Kent Hovind. His first, one of his early, early video series is uh, Creation of the 21st Century with Carl Baugh. So once you're, once this is all done, if tomorrow, if you still want more Carl Baugh, go check out Logic's channel. All right. I have a question. In a text chat like this one, how will we know when the teacher has left the room <laughs> who can all misbehave? Well, um, unfortunately, there will be a bit of a delay. So the problem isn't when, like, if, when neither Dave or I are on the screen. So just one sec. Let's let's see if I can do this. One sec. And then back. So, they, like, theoretically, when it's something like that, then we're both, Dave and I are both gone. But, um... The problem is because of the delay on YouTube, as you as you know, like if, if you guys type something in the chat on the chat window, it takes a few seconds for it to show up over here. And that's the delay that it is from where you are to where I am, because I'm coming to you from the future. Anyway, um, the problem is you will be misbehaving and either Dave or I will come back and there will be delay and we will see it and we will know. You won't know that you've been caught until you're caught. So... That's the problem. When to start misbehaving is, is easy. Um, but the stopping misbehaving, that's not going to work. Mikhail J. Money says, come on, y'all cute. You mispronounced Michael. Oh, it's Michael. It's just straight up Michael. I'm sorry, Michael. Uh, so I, I, I hope that I'm still cute as I mispronounce your name. I think people are, mis are cute. Maybe sometimes you mispronounce my name. So, yeah. Thank you, Michael. The Ronin. Have we caught any pterosaurs yet? So this was in 2002. I think Dave established 2002, the recording. Um, no. The, as of date, today's date, no pterodactyls have been documented and found in a scientific way. So sadly, no. I had to break it to the chat, Dave, that... Uh, as far as I know, there are no pterodactyls have been found in the in the twenty years since this broadcast. Paul, your pro beagle anti pterodactyl agenda has been clear for some time now. <laughs> it's true. Although but tonight, I chat needs to learn. oh, I see. I I leave in the super chat start. I know. I know how this is. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, All right. that means if you want to make more money on the show, we should you should leave more often. <laughs> You know what would really help the show take off? If maybe you weren't on it. Hey! <laughs> but you're doing great. You're doing fantastic. We love you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh. All right. We ready for the rapid fire questions? I'm just going to mute myself. And I, I have my ingredients for my drinks right here. Ah, I brought a, I brought a backup for this one now. I have Coke Zero. And uh, and I'm tonight. I'm drinking peasant rum. I'm drinking just this kind of rum. The so. captain. Yep. Oh, and one more super chat oh. before we get on the rapid fire questions. Nothing in my life will ever compare <laughs> to apologies. <laughs> <laughs> so well, cheers, Ronan. To you on I prefer that. to think that no pterodactyls have been found so far. <laughs> But I have some good have news. Yet been, have are. yet been found. That's right. Yeah, we have yeah. the permits lined up. Mm. Uh, yeah, thanks, Tim. And from and from Tim, dang, uh, I wanted to get this in before Dave got back. Oh well, yeah. Um, Dave can leave again. We, we we the night is young. The night is young. Dave could still leave. Yeah. No, I I, I get it. I see what's happening. Mm -hmm. All right. I like it better when Shannon was here talking about how cute I am and how she's on <laughs> Team Dave. Next thing I know, Heathen Queen's going to show up and just start ragging on me again. <laughs> Scientific <laughs> data. We Alice must uh, include the data regarding the decay of Earth's magnetic field. In my opinion, man appeared full-blown on planet Earth approximately 6,000 years ago, along with all the other systems. Aye, aye, aye. Yes. Six thousand years ago. Six thousand. Ay ay ay. I'm muted. Ay ay ay. Now, I'm no archaeologist, but I'm pretty sure there is evidence of human civilization going back farther than six thousand. That years. is correct. That is yeah. correct. So in in the mess and like not just area, like a little bit, like quite a bit past in in Egypt. 
in mm-hmm. uh, in China. Yeah, mm-hmm. these are all civilizations that, and not only evidence, um, especially in China and Egypt, not only does it go back older than that, we have it, it's uninterrupted. Right. So it's not like it's just like, oh, that was before the flood. You know, however the, however Carl wants to wants to phrase yeah. it. It's never stopped. It's never stopped. So that's, that's, but anyway, that's, that's just fake time. That's, Carl knows better. There you go. Years ago. Well, um, uh, oh gosh, uh, doctor, then, wait, all right, well, I'll let the, the, everybody else ask you about that, and they surely will. Uh, describe to me um, that w- what our world looked like, what our world was like before the big... Okay, so that's clearly nonsense and you're crazy, but I'm going to let the guests <laughs> point this out because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a polite host and I'm not going to just try to right. I'm going to punt this yeah. to my callers. Wink, wink, nudge, yeah. nudge, callers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, all right. I'm intrigued with your, your sound effects, the crashing thunder, the strike of lightning. <laughs> I like that. But that was a result. That was not the incipient beginning. The data regarding uh, a technical research term called pleochroic halos shows an instantaneous creation. So what was the Earth like before that? It was... What kind of halos? Pleochroic halos, I believe he said. Okay. And whatever these are, they indicate an instantaneous creation. I see. There, um, I am vaguely familiar with some haloing effects in like quartz and crystals and in rocks, like that, that sometimes young earth creationists want to say that, that perhaps decay rates haven't always been the same. Uh, I, I forget exactly, but that's clearly not what he's talking about. Yeah. Uh, I have no idea. Olivia says Jericho is dated to about 10,000 years ago. Well, but, uh, but also without the kind of walls that are described in the Bible. So that's also problematic. No comment from Dave. All right. Pristine. I, I mean, Instantaneous I as I in. Uh, a matter of boom, man, was, man was just, boom, suddenly there. Oh, no. No, no. Not like that. Exactly. And the well? Polonium halos. That is what I meant. I, is that what Carl meant? I don't think that's what he said. I don't think that's said, what he Maybe meant, he did. That, but thank you, Michael, for, for elucidating my, what I was vaguely recalling. Yes. We could I did make it. a video. I did make a video no. on this at one point. But what I did was I brought on actual scientists. And I interviewed right. them. Because I couldn't pretend to understand all the... So boring scientists. Things. What's that? So boring scientists who weren't... Boring scientists. And actually, done. to be fair... It was the original interview was super boring. I'm not gonna like it was it was <laughs> most super scientists. boring. And I uh and they wrote me afterwards and said, I don't know how you edited and made this cartoon like all make make it seem quasi interesting because they like we know what we gave you was like dull as <laughs> dull as molasses. So they were uh, they were quite happy that I had jazzed it up. Oh a thanks, bit, Ronan. As the kids say. The kids say jazz it up a bit, right? Yeah. I was. Dave, and you should. <laughs> Dave was thirsty. Be nice to him. I'm still trying to pour my drink, but okay. Thanks, Dave. You pour, pour your drink now. Have you ever, have you ever been in court, Paul? Like an not. actual full court no. setting? No. It is not anything like what you see on TV. It is so boring, and so like I mean, now there's a lot more real court stuff. You can you've you've kind of can see on tv because it used to be they would never ever take cameras into actual courtroom and go but real court is dull and long and just boring as hell it's nothing like law and order or any tv courtroom thing right like yeah it's yeah i i that's the thing with and real science is like real science is boring as hell it is just a right. lot of like well we tested and tested and tested this again yeah we got I have 100 things. cultures that every day i come in and i catalog the different growth on 100 different cultures yeah and that's and i spend yeah. roughly a third of my time applying for grants that's <laughs> that's real science yeah. um 
I think a lot of jobs that seem exciting are like so. One of the things I was that became weird to me was that like movie sets. Yeah. Um. Now, yeah. I, my job was a little bit different because I actually my job was literally to to like go and find what the most exciting thing anyone was doing that day on set so I could cover that for fans. But if you're just there, yeah, like movie sets are incredibly boring. I the I nuts and bolts of. I got to be on a few non Star Wars sets where like my job was just like I didn't have a specific job and you're just you're mostly just sitting around waiting for people to adjust lights, yeah, and people to show up and you know do their thing for yeah it's any it's like job anything is, right once you see how yeah. the sausage is made exactly it gets the <laughs> yeah. a lot of the shine is worn off. I'll tell you what's not boring, what's glamorous. YouTube streaming. YouTube is totally like not boring. But YouTube is never yeah. boring. It's always exciting and cool and glamorous. Especially when you got cool cats like us. <laughs> hey. Tim says, former lawyer, boring to you, ordinary citizen. <laughs> I know lawyers. It's boring to them too. Um, but also, you know, when you're one of the lawyers who is involved, you have you have higher stakes than the average person sitting in the I have gallery. seen lawyers fall asleep in court before. Uh-oh. That's, that's, you know, I get it. I have dog issues. All right. Oh. Yay. They were cool, Peyton. They were they very were cool. cool. Well, <laughs> in a matter of six literal days, we have interrelated systems being created. Oh, okay. The, as in the Bible, six. Oh, yeah, as oh, oh, okay. <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. We're doing this. Oh, you do. You oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, we're going by the Bible. All right. Well, uh, then, then I'll just stop making questions then. Yeah. In the Bible, six okay. Earth days. Six literal days. They had to be Earth days because of the interrelationship of all these living systems. For instance, uh, according to evolutionary theory, we have plants appearing about two hundred forty million years ago. That's right. But we don't have some of the insects and birds procreating those appearing for another. 100 to 120 million years, that won't work. Those plants, 98% of the plants, are procreated by insects. It won't work, Dave. I mean, do I, do I need to, you know, okay. <laughs> well, <You're>... just briefly, <laughs> just briefly, like, so this is a, it's it's an argument that wasn't like when I was a young Earth creationist. And correct me if I'm wrong, you never were a young Earth creationist, right? Like I was never at, a young Earth creationist. At no point. No. No. Yeah. So. Um. All right. But but the young Earth position, I I this seemed like a reasonable argument to me. Well, yeah, like the the things that pollinate that thing didn't had to be created at the same time. Like that only makes sense. Um, yeah. But of course. I, yes. But and once if you, you understand evolution a little bit better. Yeah. You understand that, well, they didn't start out being completely codependent on each other. Yes. These are relationships that, you know, they started off fully independent, but as they were working together and working together, that that particular thing worked so well that they stopped doing the independent activity. And over time... And for huge chunks of the Earth's history, the only plants were algae. Right. Much as they are now, but it's like yeah. that was what was oxygenating the atmosphere. That was what was, you know, there was no terrestrial plant based life. Right. That came And then much it was better. grasses. Yeah. Like flowering plants come and way like, after. And even like, and like, and like lichen mm -hmm. and, you know, like these kinds of things, right? The stuff that's just barely holding on to rock. And you're like, what is it living on? Even now, there's places if you go like far up north and like north of the Arctic Circle around and you see this lichen on those rocks and like, what the fuck is this plant living on? There is literally nothing here. This is a barren scape. It's minus 20 all year round and it's somehow living on this rock. Whereas in Carl's universe, yeah. So um you have flowers the... showed up right away. No, 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 no. <laughs> you had plants on day three. Right. The sun was created on day four. Right. 
It has actually been so long since I've read Genesis, I would not have been able to tell you what was right. created. So, okay. so it's it's sort of like, well, wait, so the God just made things that rely on photosynthesis and just have them. So that's weird I mean, when you think about. It. You'd think it'd be like the sun would be day one, right? Like that's the first thing is like, well, put the sun in the sky, and we got nope. sun. No, nope. it's just light, and that's actually why it was like, well, of course it was Earth days, but it's like, well, wait, how could it be an Earth day when you didn't have a I, sun till day four? I did love that the uh, art was trying to throw kind of the, but you know, like mm, not Earth days, right? Like. <laughs> We're talking about some kind of. He tried to give him an out, but he didn't care, didn't yeah. take it. No, we're, this is twenty four hour mm -hmm. periods, Art. This is what we're talking about. Oh, okay. That's uh, right. mm, yeah. So my God created plants, then the sun, but you people mm -hmm. have problems because bees were evolved later. It's like, nah. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, to be fair, if you, if Genesis was true and there was God creating, I'm like. I don't think the fact the plants were created a day before the sun is a big hang up because in this it's situation, no, no, it, like yeah. it literally is what it yeah. is a hang up for oddly is, um, and I don't disagree. The people who want to say, well, no, these were like each day represented like a billion years. Yes. Yeah. Um, because then it's like, well, you created plants and then a billion years later created the sun sun somehow what was what was going on before then a lot of stuff doesn't like work if the sun's not yeah, there it seems not leading like... to the orbit of the planets and things right yeah that's why a lot of these harm when you're harmonizing you you kind of get into uh, some tricky stuff too yeah and birds well it might it might work if uh, a day in the life of god was right you know uh however uh, those plants require biorhythms uh, that are, uh, those plants have biorhythms that are affected by planetary schedule, by the constellatory schedules. So the entire system was an intact. By yes. constellations? <laughs> we all know that plants are affected by constellations. Yeah. I, I checked my horoscope quite clearly in the plant section said. Uh, I feel like this guy was rushing to turn in his homework. Yes. Yeah. Um, thank you, Ronan, for your five dollars. Um, the again, like I actually, even what he's proposing here, if you are saying it's twenty four hour days, like how much are plants affected by the sun? And the positions of the constellation in a 24-hour period. I mean, I feel like the sun probably quite a bit. The constellation within a 24-hour period. Well, I mean, no, a plant's fine with yeah, all like those well, so hours. Yeah. I mean, having lived close to BC, you know, and in, in, in our area, we've had like plenty of forest fires, and mm -hmm. um, sometimes the smoke is so thick that essentially the plants can't get sun for days at a time. Yeah effectively um and they and i know that the biologists around us can actually see that in whatever whatever studies they do with the biology around it they can actually see oh yeah we can see that in such and such a year like for three or four days you know there there was no sun here and it, it's a it's a it impacts the plants but they don't die no anybody who has house plants you know like you can just shut all your blinds and leave your house pitch black right. for a day or two yeah plants will be fine as long as you exactly. you know so, give them the, yeah. so, much like human like beings evolved and uh, you know like we can go a day or two without water and food it's like we don't like to we'd mm. rather have a steak and you know a nice big glass of water but if you're if you can't it's not like you instantly die right away because you wouldn't you know no species is going to survive long if that's the and many of us on youtube can go months without seeing the sun well mm-hmm that's <laughs> conversation. We're going to get into that system originally. And now microbiologists are really blazing a new horizonary research project. Uh, they have found that the living systems at the molecular level had to be totally intact to function at all. There is no scenario, 
and that's admitted in the technical literature, whereby they can even imagine the development of living systems to produce a living cell. Hmm. Art in one... No one even has an idea, Dave. I mean, like, in a way, what he's saying isn't wrong. Like, if you just take any particular cell or current organism and just remove some of the systems or some of the molecules, it's like, yeah, that's not going to go well. Nope. But that's not how evolution works again. Nope. <laughs> like, uh, also betraying the fact, like, he's like, well, it always has to, like, I bet there were scientists who said, no, the system always has to be complete to survive. But complete doesn't mean the way it is the way it is now. Yeah, that's that. See, there you go. That's exactly it. That's you stated it well. Right. Like it's because every every system has to be able to reproduce and have the next generation. So yeah. Uh. So. Uh. Thank you. So big fat wedge. If that's a Star that's Wars reference, that. that's great. Is that a Star Wars reference? I don't know what it is. It could be. Um, maybe features for... So, Forrest Valkai is a real scientist who who knows real things. Uh, if, I definitely want to have him on my channel sometime. But it won't be One for living Drunken cell, Friday Night Science. You have over 60,000 proteins. It, it will be for... Uh, I did not realize that touching my earbud was going to actually start the playback. Yep, that's something I've just learned. <laughs> <laughs> We're professionals. <laughs> but now 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 i probably will now now i'm going to just be touching my ear uh yeah no forest yeah for i'd love to have forest on the channel but uh what we do here is for lighthearted fun and normally we will not be doing science topics here normally we're doing conspiracy theories and things this is this is just for today let's see if i can make this work means of a hundred different configurations each shit, literally like assigned a task and if you have a small percentage of those malfunctioning, the cell aborts, the chance, the mathematical scientific chance that that living cell could have evolved and that those systems... Of a natural selection, Doctor. Uh, the, the weak one... Okay, I'm, I'm glad Art is jumping in here, but... <laughs> <laughs> I love watching that. your brain collapse. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So just any time of, well, anyone who attempts to try to specify what the chance of something that happened like in history is like, yeah, the math, like what are the chance. chances? Like what are the chances that George Washington was going to be president? Like, how would you come up with that number? Cause I'd say roughly a hundred percent. Well, yeah, exactly. Cause it happened, but like before the, these are just like things that you can't, there's what, what's in the yeah. remainder. Like if you're dividing, what's, yeah. not the remainder, what's in the divisor, what's in the, what are we dividing by exactly? Like, it's just, uh, anyway, art's going to, I think art's going to do our job for us. Let's let him do it. Yeah. The, uh, the bad ones didn't uh, continue and uh, evolution, the theory of. Uh, yes, so not that. you on the show. Um, theory of uh, ensured that uh, the right ones eventually survived. I mean, that that's a theory. Evolution or natural selection only preserves the living systems. It does not explain how the systems got here. Hmm. They had to be here, had to be intact and functional. So that's actually correct. Good for you. Natural selection is the part where it keeps the good stuff and and discards the bad stuff. So that is correct. In order for natural selection to preserve them. All right, Actually, all right, all right, all right, doctor. Yeah. Uh, before, before the six days began, what was here? Okay, now I wasn't here, <laughs> but uh, I do have an opinion. Okay. Before the six days began, since we know that living systems and the universal structure, I hope we have time to get into universal physics and the universal structure, all require design. I hope we have time to get into universal physics, Dave. Because I mean, in a way, I hope we do, because I'm much more <laughs> comfortable there than in... Uh... Yeah, that's, that's, we're, I know you're, Art, you're bogging me down on these questions. Can we just yeah. get to universal yeah. physics? Yeah. Genetics and, and uh, young Earth, old Earth, 
all that kind of stuff. That's your mom, by the way. When we get into astrophysics, well, then I, I feel a little more comfortable. That's where Dave again. shines. All right. Absolutely. And the second law of thermodynamics called entropy means everything's running downhill, so it was better in the past. No, it doesn't. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Um, do we don't need to get into what the second law is. No, entropy doesn't mean that it's running down. No. It does mean that there is a, well, there's there's an essential like a constant loss of energy, yeah, of usable energy, yeah. yeah. It doesn't mean that your room necessarily gets messier over time, which is like the way they no. describe it. No, no, yeah. Since everything is explained within the six days of literal creation, mm -hmm. prior to that, yes, only the creator existed we know scientifically no planets no suns no systems no anything uh, no so so we don't have the uh lightning i mean i mean that was day four not even on day three we didn't have those things oh what are you drinking now i am this is brand new so i have a a like subscription service that delivers crates of delicious craft beers to my door that from parts of the world that i don't live in so I get to try them. This is one of them. So I've never had it. This is called a Junction Tamave Pivo? T-M-A-V-E. How would you pronounce that? T-A-M-E-V? T-M-A-V-E. Tamav. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway. This is the, why, uh, I, I'm like, why, aren't, this why is, is a, this not our sponsor? Why are we being sponsored by soap? <laughs> and hammers. I know today's hammers. Thank you. Well, hammers. because real companies not, no, won't give us any money. Not, Paul. <laughs> I am not my, trying to disparage the fine folks over at Hammers. This is a this is a Czech, uh, Czech Republic dark oh. beer. Apparently, well, we so. don't. If this is a Czech mafia thing, I don't want them to sponsor our show. That would be. Uh, don't you though? <laughs> they they got deep pockets. I feel like we've become there's become kind of laundering situation. Look, you're coming out all right in this. Just don't worry too much about it. All right, <laughs> all right don't worry. Actually, I don't even know what the terms for the hammer oh. people is. Maybe it's equally bad. I don't know. Damn, this is pretty good. All right. Oh, trust me. There's definitely no money laundering going on with the hammer people, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> because that would involve <laughs> money, which is something Oops, we don't and... actually get from any of our made up sponsors. What? I know. I'm sorry, Paul. I didn't mean to break this to you on stream. I meant to have this conversation after you. None of these are real. I'm just making this all up as I go along. <laughs> I I am here busting my butt every second Friday, sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> Most <laughs> second Fridays. Yeah. Listening to Art Bell, as I would do, yeah. frankly, whether or not you guys yeah. are here or not. Beer and hope are better, the Rodin. Beer and hope are better. <laughs> Well, I don't know. Maybe, maybe we can look into Hope as a sponsor, or Rye, or Rye, and the crescendo yep. of thunder. Yep. Uh, it, everything had to be created intact. In fact, so there was no space. There was no time. Uh, astrophysicists now recognize that space, time, and matter are all interrelated. Uh -huh, but I mean, prior to. I'm excited that he had the balls to bring astrophysicists into this <laughs> nonsense. Yeah. Um, now, so far, so far, so space, time, and matter are interrelated. Now, that would be a hard thing to disprove. That's a very, yeah. that's such a vague sentence. I mean, it's also absolutely true. Yeah. In, in I mean, any, yeah. The fourth dimension in which matter exists, you know, is, is, the three dimensions of space and the fourth dimension of time. So, ta-da. Well, Timothy Harmon, when you bought all that soap, I hope you remember to use promo code Toast to Toast mm. for your free soap. When you buy Creation soap. itself, as we understand it, uh, we have a limited perspective of these things, but sure. space, time, planet, suns, everything did not exist, could, not, could not have exi existed. Uh, you know, absolute nihility, nothing. Only the creator was capable of forming the space-time dimension. And matter, space, and time are all inter-
related. With do you the know, formation of one, you affect the other. Do you know, Doctor, uh, I, uh, you, you know, of course, about the Big Bang Theory, right? Oh, I, yes. I once had a caller yeah. who called the show, said something I, I, I'll never forget. He said, I believe uh, that the Creator, God, in effect, blew himself up, and that that created all that is. And um, that sort of stuck with me, and I don't, I don't know why. Okay, let me give a variation of that. If he blew himself up, he would... <laughs> wait, wait, don't you want to hear the end of this thought? <laughs> I do. I'm going to let... I'm going to go with the Super Chat just for a second here while you stroke yeah. your beard. Yeah. Oh, no. Hopefully, mm. Paul hasn't spent the sponsorship money yet. I absolutely have. Yeah. This is actually going to get real awkward when the stream ends. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Paul and I are going to have to have a long talk. That's how I paid for this haircut. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> not be here would not be currently existing to maintain the universe. <laughs> What's that? You look like you're going to a job interview at a bank. What's going on? Well, it's, it's, it didn't it didn't work out. Yeah. If you want to go see my hair as as it should look, go like my Vice Rhino stream a couple of days ago, which was for charity. That my hair was all right. I don't know what happened yeah. today. I Everyone go check out the Vice Rhino stream for charity. Yes, this absolutely just <laughs> looks like yeah. I am uh, I'm meeting up with the young Republicans. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, or it's um is it class picture or, day at your private school? Is that what yeah. this is? But also um I'm going to be like the middle middle tier bad guy in a film about where the corporation is the bad thing. Yeah. Yeah, where they're poisoning the river and yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm you're not like, the you're like the boss. lawyer that's standing behind the main yeah. lawyer. That's right. Defending the corporation, dumping chemicals into the against Aaron Brockovich. Yeah. That's right. That's what I've got going tonight. <laughs> uh, anyways, what anyways. nonsense was he supposed to hear something about astrophysics that's wrong and would not have been. Hmm. And would not have been here to orchestrate the living systems, which require an incredible uh, futuristic knowledge of all the capacities and all the adaptable potential of the living systems. I think we can better state it like this. Uh, it was not a big bang. It was a big word. <laughs> God said, let there be light. Astrophysicists now recognize that, was actually a sentence. that the, the <laughs> absolute essentials for all the matter Everything that we experience is latent within the vibratory uh, cycles of light. Oh, the single word light. Okay. Uh, so then. Okay. What? I've heard that. I have heard that claim before. Go ahead. What do you say? So I'm like, what? What the hell is he talking about? What? The single so, word light. So the word he wanted to say that all the vibrations necessary for later life, all the vibratory requirements uh -huh. are con are contained in the word light. What the but, fuck is a vibratory requirement? What are you even talking I, but yeah, about? But also, uh, was in the word in the English word light? What was what was God speaking? What language yeah. was God speaking prior to the creation of humans? American so we English. Possibly, <laughs> we could possibly be testing the vibrate vibratory requirements. Oh my goodness. I hope That's, I hope uh, I actually kind of want to. I feel like uh, I should find out if Carl has done more more videos so this, on that. This guy is very heavily into the um, uh, what do you want to call it? Like the clockmaker school of mm -hmm. right. That it's like yeah. everything is so. There clearly has to be a divine intelligence because everything's so perfectly organized that. Um. You know what I'm trying to say, right? The, the, yeah, it's the, um, yeah, it's it's the intelligent design, mm -hmm. general idea that, that yeah, it's it's the irreducible complexity, basically that the complexity of the universe can't uh, can't happen by chance, and also there's no way to break it down into component parts the way we would say that happen, or I would say at least that it happens. Um, 
That's supposed to be apostrophe M American Ronan. Sorry. Just correct. Right. American. He God American. Spoke American. Yeah. yeah. Um I do like when people find the occasional tweets. Uh I don't know if Twitter's still up at this point. I, I hear that it might not be. I don't know. <laughs> um I do enjoy the people who find the occasional tweets of like someone's talking about how Jesus Jesus wrote the Bible in English. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's if if English was good enough for Jesus, it's good enough for me. That kind of stuff. Yeah, it's good enough for me. Uh, there, there was what was created, and uh, and and there was a world, and and this world was populated by you, you say dinosaurs and man at the same time. Uh, and and then and then I'm I'm trying to get a concept of what was like pre pre, pre flood. In other sure. words, uh, yeah. was was it all uh, tropical? Were the was the climate different? Uh, certainly, you've said and demonstrated, I think, that the pressure, the atmospheric pressure, was different. But That's what correct. was the world like? Well, first of all, the dinosaurs in that world were absolutely necessary. When you take the increments, the parameters of that world, we know that we had additional atmospheric pressure. All right. Take the parameters of the world. Yeah. Gotcha. Check. But when it so was something else. This is what we know, Paul. This isn't, we're, we're, there's a lot of supposition. Right, first, the... let's talk about what we know. This is That's incontrovertible. Fact. Before we start speculating, yeah. these are going to be we, educated before we guesses. Get crazy theories. Mm. Yeah. Let's just let's nail down. Like, you know, the old, uh, because, you know, once you've eliminated the impossible, Oh, <laughs> let's talk about what we know. This is what we know for a fact. <laughs> All right. Yeah. We, what we know for a fact is that we know the parameters of the universe. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Those are we. That's we know that a lot of atmospheres of pressure everywhere, mm -hmm. and oxygen and pterodactyls in Papua New Guinea. These are the things we know. In their technical data, that we're losing the Earth's electromagnetic field, the oh. intensity of that field. That's right. So that field was much more powerful. Uh, it is today uh, 0.5 gauss, one half gauss. It was approximately 10 times that, or 5 gauss. That's what we're working with in the hyperbaric biosphere. Wow. Under those conditions. Wow. What, do you know about, uh, what do you know about magnetic fields, Dave? I know a little bit. He's not wrong. The Earth's magnetic field is getting weaker. I do not have any clue what the measurements were or what the right. supposed measurements were back in the day. But it is a thing that is slowly, slowly, slowly ticking down, down, down. What 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 if I told you, Dave, yep. that uh, there's evidence on the ocean floor uh -huh. that the magnetic field has gotten stronger and weaker and stronger and weaker and stronger and weaker in cycles i would absolutely believe Earth's history it. yeah yeah because uh, it's based on convection currents in the and the earth's core and like all kinds of things but it is also truth like slowly very slowly the earth's core is cooling it is and there, there will come a point when it finally essentially solidifies and the earth's magnetic field completely drops right the mistake uh, is to make is to try and extrapolate that say well it was it, at maximum strength on creation Yes. And we are heading towards a minimum strength because exactly as you said, because it's um, our liquid, the fact that we have a, a, a hard core with some liquid in the middle, like they can observe other planets that have a similar configuration and they can notice yeah. that, you know, the, the signs of the magnetic fields. And if you want to get into this, it's, it's kind of, again, quasi boring, but they, when you look at the, the, uh, in the ocean crust, you know, you can see as it shifts that, that things that get solidified specifically when, when volcanoes erupt and then they harden, they can tell what the magnetic field was based on yes. some of that, but they can yeah. also tell directionality and strength. And that there have that just, if you, as you go down, there's been periods of stronger and weaker and stronger and weaker. It's a cyclical thing. It's, yep. it may not end well for humans. They're actually like, there will become a point where it's going to get dip at a very low point and probably also get very strong and it's something we'll have to deal with anyway. Yes, because also the magnetic polarity has shifted many times. Yes, and, and also, yes, and also yeah. where it's geographically bounded or, yeah. or 
the focal the focal point of it also has shifted absolutely correctly so yeah. and that um, well that happens even now like the the magnetic north wanders the magnet yeah. in south like yeah. slightly yeah um creationists like to treat things as if they're clocks that are not clocks mm -hmm. so yeah we're not on a clock to like zero magnetism i feel like there's somebody probably in chat who actually knows you know is like a geophysicist or something and is screaming right now that wayne wayne gaffney tells yeah. me that that every 2.3 million years if i'm counting my zeros correctly yeah that roughly speaking there is there there are regular shifts in the, which is always one of those things where i see like they always talk about like you know you see there's many movies where it's like the mm. the, the magnetic pole is going to shift and it's the complete end of like everything that really is like well this has happened many many times and it's right. really not that big a deal it will whenever it comes up it will be a a bigish deal and then it will there will certainly be some telecommunications issues and stuff like that but it's not like all oh, life's going to be instantly wiped out by a fireball from the sun the second that the the magnetic field the field flips right and but also theoretically there will be like a magnetic solstice of, as it were right it'll be it'll be some low point and then the next yeah. day it'll start going up again so yeah. yes that's exactly right Communication between cells and the fabric necessary, the energy fabric necessary for living systems was superior. And we have found that in our experimentation. For instance, fruit flies, and if you have acclimations in the audience, they'll recognize Drosophila melanogaster, standard fruit fly experiments that Harvard runs. And, and, and they do fruit fly experiments because they multiply quickly. The generations come and go by our uh, standards very, very quickly. So you can see changes very, yes. very quickly. That's the idea, right? Right. right. Egg to larva to pupa, 14 days, there you 14 go. days in, in, in the uh, phase, the living phase. In the second generation art, we tripled by putting them in this context. You ask, what was it like with uh, doubling the atmospheric pressure, with increasing the electromagnetic field, not in an AC current, but a DC current. Right. That is vitally important. Okay. By increasing that field, in the second generation, we tripled the adult lifespan of these fruit flies. Really? Now, now that's never been done before without genetic manipulation. Do you believe, uh, Dr. Wait, so what DC AC current? What's he talking about? So when he, he personally sounds like he, he was trying to say that he personally was doing fruit fly experiments. Yeah. And... I don't know at what point you're applying currents to the flies. Yeah. It's like, is he talking about, it's like he's talking about it like the magnetic field, but Earth's magnetic field is not an alternating current field. But, okay. So let's, let's give him benefit out here. So somehow. I mean, it, okay. That's, it is. It's like, cause direct current doesn't. Yeah. Okay. Theoretically, in a small space, you could simulate an alternate magnetic field, right? Yeah, and you need AC current to generate magnetic fields. So, I don't understand how he would generate any magnetic field at all with a DC current, but... You would not. Yeah, DC currents don't generate magnetic field. Okay, so I wasn't... So, that I, was, I was confused for a reason. Okay, that made sense. Um, but he was able to... Or maybe using a DC current was able to minimize the effects of our magnetic field on these flies uh, i um, yeah this feels it's, like this feels like nothing this feels like he's i mean it's all nonsense so we don't need to worry too much about it also like i i looked up just to double check before this started i checked uh, google scholar to see how many published paper, papers carl baugh had yeah uh, it still was zero so <laughs> still he was still zero yeah if he was tripled if yeah. he was tripling the lifespans of fruit flies, I don't care what the experiment was. If the if the lifespan was being tripled, like someone's gonna someone's gonna want to yeah. know about that one. That would be the, that would be news because that's money. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so two hundred thirty thousand. Apparently, every two hundred thirty thousand years, the magnetic fields. But anyway, big fat wedge has my back on reading the numbers of zeros. And uh, TC writes currents generate magnetic, generate fields magnetic fields. Yeah, okay, that's so both can both okay. both can. That he, he, yeah, it's been too long since I took physics. It's yeah. All right. I mean, any so, current passing through will generate. That's yeah. That makes sense. Actually, yes, because that was. 
I'll, okay, I'm not going to get into a long thing about no, 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 why but, okay. from IDE cables to say that, but a lot of it has to do with magnetic fields. Yes. Also, just so I guess he hit Carl's dot dot dot. Therefore, it makes sense that everyone was living three times longer when the Earth was created because the magnetic field was stronger. Seems like maybe that isn't the maybe there isn't a therefore. Anyway. Well, that uh, were you to simulate these conditions for a human being, it would be, of, of course, a very long term experiment that you could never do ethically. But I mean, if you could do it, is it your belief that you would end up with humans second generation that would extend life period in a well, by half or even by double or whatever? Well, uh, yes. Take the number uh, given to these fruit flies, and that's the equivalent, even with their damaged DNA, and correspondingly our damaged DNA. Right. Even with their damaged DNA, their adult lifespan was tripled in the second generation. That's the equivalent of our living to be 200 years of age under these conditions, even with our damaged DNA. Hmm. I'm not what, what damaged DNA do we have? I'm glad you asked, Dave. I Our, did ask. The DNA of uh, the DNA of <laughs> everyone. Sorry, Eric Storch just made me laugh. But all right, yeah. <laughs> just about to publish through my paper. <laughs> Newly hatched pterodactyls ate it. Well, that yeah. deserves that is. But pterodactyls so far ate my homework. That's, that's definitely the worth that. Tears of the night, my friend. Mm -hmm. I I uh I recently had a chance to had a be on a chat with Eric. Oh. I had a earlier this week I had a special patron slash member only hangout time for people who financially support the channel, and Eric was one of the supporters who was there, and he was a cool guy. Well, I'm super glad Eric's a cool guy. Yeah. Thank you, Eric. Thank you for your support, as always. And Jaspin writes, long time watcher, but first time catching a live stream. Saw Toast to Toast tackling Bach. Couldn't resist. Of course. Love and appreciate you both. Well. Well, thank we, you very I much. I appreciate you as a friend, Jaspin. And I love you. Mm. Paul's too emotionally stunted to say it, but I'm not. I am. And apparently now, I've broken. Look, I've broken. That's the, not the hair of an emotionally healthy oh. person. But anyways, I you were telling a, me about I found a bug here, Dave. Oh, now it don't work. Oh, I'm a software engineer at heart. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So we were created, Dave, with yeah. perfect DNA. Okay. Because all creatures, all life in the Garden of Eden times, we were it was it was before sin. And so right. things were things were as God created them as perfect. But as you I've know, when, element. Yep. when Eve ate the apple, yep. then one of the punishments was that all creation was going to groan. Right. That all creation was going to now suffer death. So like the the hardcore of hard earth creationists would say, or a younger creationists would say that not a single thing died. Yeah. No microbe died. Nothing, nothing. died. Perfect DNA. Yeah. Until the apple Honestly, was renewing, yeah. Well, and, was and it's not. I'm not going to try and straw man. It wasn't an apple until the the fruit. The, they ate the fruit, and um, and therefore, so everything since then. So our DNA has been getting worse and worse. The the theory is that our DNA has just been getting worse and worse as the effects of the fall accumulate. I mean, compare us to the greatest generation. That's the evidence That's is right. pretty incontrovertible. So genetic entropy. They built the Hoover is, Dam and uh, beat the Nazis, Paul. What the fuck have you done? <laughs> genetic entropy is the phrase that they like to use for it in, in their fancy ivory tower, in the ivory towers of the young earth creationist movements. Um, Dave, it's my hypothesis that humans have long since actually removed themselves from evolutionary pressures. Ah, well, you're. We could get into a conversation about that. I actually agree. Yes. Yeah, like we've long since we've stopped uh, making our survival hinge on our genetics. Yeah, and it's we now, now we now alter our environment to suit us rather than alter ourselves to suit the environment. Correct, and we also have technology to to uh, 
a lot like for example, you and I both wear glasses. Yes. Um, you know, that is now so it it is now a case that bad eyesight is 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 almost not a, involved at all in terms of natural selection. No. Um at least in you know in, in modern parts of the world. So anyway, I that's just when 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 people want to espouse, for example, anything about how humans might currently or use examples of humans not currently adhering to natural selection. It's just because we've risen above it. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Timothy Harmon apologized that I wasn't invited to your special. Well, Super you don't financially support friend. my channel. So you I know. don't. I don't. <laughs> yeah. Can't just have riffraff. Sure, I want to live 200 years, but uh, I'd like the potential to live a little longer and with better health than, than some of us have experienced. So in this large biosphere, we are not running experiments with human beings. We're not licensed to do so, I even understand. though we have a number of medical scholars. Who but are it is, nevertheless, your belief that if you could, that would be the result. Uh, definitely. And uh, because there's no difference between a fruit fly and a human. If if it triples the if it triples the life of a fruit fly, it will triple the life of a human. Yeah. That's just science. So I've figured out how to triple the lifespan of a human being, but nobody's really interested in this or doing this. <laughs> no, certainly not billions or trillions with a T dollars <laughs> to be gained from somebody who figures out, hey, you want to live to 200? Yes, is literally everybody. I do want to live to 200. <laughs> well, you can. Guess what? Because I'm not cheap. licensed. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm not, I'm not licensed for human experimentation. <laughs> oh. uh, all, right. all right. Do you know? Oh, it, it's almost like you never heard of Dorothy Parker. I don't think I have. Do you know who Dorothy Parker is? I don't know who Dorothy Parker is. I, uh, I'm sorry, Tim. Your uh, your references are too uh, erudite for us. Elon Musk would like that. I'm sure a lot of people would like that. Yeah, Elon Musk amongst them. <laughs> For eight dollars a month, you can live to two hundred. I mean, I'd find a way to scrounge up eight hundred dollars a month. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, sometimes no, eight, I'm eight, eight, not eight hundred, eight dollars, eight dollars a month. Yeah, I feel like maybe it's after 120 lived. years. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe I'll point, drop the hundred twenty. That's yeah. right. At this point, Netflix is more important to me than living longer. Yeah. So, yeah. Cause is it living long? So just living longer, because I mean it, I don't want to get dark, but I you know, I saw like my grandparents and various people. When you start getting up closer to a hundred, maybe maybe another hundred years of that isn't necessarily what I want. Yeah. yeah. I think what, what people always want to in their head, they imagine is that it also like triples. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that you're like, you're like 30 for. Yeah. Like at, when you're 90, right. it feels like you're 30. And when you're a hundred, it feels like, yeah, you're, yeah. 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 Um, or that if you're, when you're, when you're 210, you really, it feels like you're 70. That's kind of thing. Uh, King Alexander does, I do not wish to live longer, have enough pain now, I do not look forward to more age. Well, that seems reasonable in some cases. Uh, you ask about dinosaurs. Dinosaurs are a vital part of the creation. We may never be able to retrieve a living pterodactyl or a Machelium bimbi from uh, the third world countries, That's but we talk. can run experiments with a Tuatara <laughs> lizard. Now that lizard is uh, that loser talk. <laughs> this is why on. none of the girls are inviting you to prom, Carl. <laughs> Carl, because you got a bad attitude. <laughs> Where's that self-confidence, man? Mm -hmm. uh, technically, a dinosaur. Reptiles today have two foramen, two is, holes. Is that in found there. in Papua New Guinea? Uh, it's found in, uh, in New Zealand. New Zealand, okay. Uh, and this tuatar lizard has four foramen holes in his head, so technically, he's a dinosaur. Dinosaurs were different from modern reptiles. <laughs> so technically, that's, that's the thing. That's the thing that makes you a dinosaur. If you have four... Four holes in your head. <laughs> Not living 65 million years ago or 
all of the various bone differences or oh, whatever. <laughs> That's it's a baby dinosaur. Uh, men seldom oh, make glasses at girls who wear glasses. Yeah, there we go. Song lyrics, Tim, always a, a way to my heart. For this creature. So we would we do plan to run some experiments with these creatures in the biosphere, and thus we would be... Do you have a license for that, Carl? <laughs> yes, he probably does. I'm kidnapping... Because well, he got the paperwork for this. He probably does. He got the yeah. paperwork for the Tyrannosaur eggs... He seems like a guy who oh, plays hi. by the rules. Oh. New drinks are being delivered. You're delivered new drinks. That's awesome. Um, oh, come on. That's the first thing I grabbed. Just accept it. It's delicious. It's empty. Well, it's in there. Oh. I... He oh. recreated oh, the dinosaur. The enzymatic control of the egg uh, of a frog with DNA, dinosaur DNA inserted, I think would self abort. But here we have living dinosaurs with which we can do experimentation. Now back to the human beings. Uh, in this context, with the pre flood world uh, having greater atmospheric pressure, uh, having uh, stronger electromagnetic energy, this not only affects the system of uh, mammals and reptiles, but it affects the plant life as well. In fact, um, a Japanese scholar, Dr. Kim Mori, simulated these conditions with a cherry tomato plant. And before he died, that cherry tomato plant was 16 feet tall, had 903 tomatoes on it. Hey, let me tell you an interesting story. It's interesting. Go Arch. <laughs> Just so hard. <laughs> this was the very first possibly verifiable thing a person could go look. He gave a name of a scientist, he gave him a name of a study, yeah. and he he made a hard claim that this that, that it was like however tall the thing was and it had nine hundred and six tomatoes on it. These are all things we could go check. And Art's like well, you're boring me now. You know, you know who's got an interesting story? Me. <laughs> oh. oh man. Okay. Well, now I'm excited. Yeah. We're gonna get it. We're gonna finally get an interesting story, Dave. Yeah. Enough about your tomatoes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Japanese guy grew tomatoes. Super cool. Anyways. <laughs> Do you know when we should King's mention paper... that we have uh, my wife is a gardener here in the desert. This is a it's a doggone thing. Um, we we grow artichokes and uh, tomatoes and you know a lot of things you wouldn't think you can grow in the desert. She grows one year, doctor. I swear to you, what I'm going to tell you is true. Uh, we planted the usual. I, I love you know those little tomatoes. Yeah. And uh, so we had a whole bunch of tomato plants going. One of them, one of them went completely berserk. I mean, it became a tomato tree. This thing was monstrous. It had 900 tomatoes on it. We 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 thought it was some sort of aberrant. We we had no idea what it was, but. We've never in our lives seen anything like it. It just you know. <laughs> Dave, never tell a two wisdom two story. <laughs> because it's always somebody at the party who's got a four wisdom two story. <laughs> just waiting in the wings. Yeah. Uh yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Your your guy had nine hundred tomatoes. I had a tree with nine hundred tomatoes. I don't know hey, what we guys had. Honey, whatever. <laughs> I was growing tomatoes in the desert, and I had a giant tomato tree that grew. <laughs> and that's Must have been one of the that... hyperbaric tomatoes, eh, Doc? <laughs> he didn't. He didn't need the magnetic field to be different. He didn't need the oxygen to be different, or the atmospheric pressure to be different. Yeah. I'm just out uh, in the middle of Nevada. Yeah. So I guess everything you're saying is kind of <laughs> crap, eh? Anyways. <laughs> I'm glad you got your tomatoes and your fancy equipment. I just put them in the ground. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, yep. Yes, it is. <sighs> okay, carry on. You know, next to its brothers and sisters that were all normal size, this thing grew into a monster. And it what? produced it produced more tomatoes than we could have had in a million years. And most of them died on the vine. We just, it was incredible. How long did it live? It lived that season. Okay, That's now. all, that's all, just that season. And you don't... Oh, Carl's, Carl's looking for a way to his, have his story be better. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yours only lived one did year. It, did it live three times as long as a normal tomato? Because... <laughs> Probably Nephilim. The ears died on the vine. That sounds yeah. terrible. Yeah. Know what uh, variant parameter you use? We to don't produce that. Not even a clue. It was just you know one of the bunch. Okay. Now that's very interesting because a friend of mine used uh, symphonic sound, which is one of the parameters of the pre-flood world. You asked me what it was like. Yep. Uh, I want to hear this so bad, Paul. How is symphonic okay, sound? I just want to know what the world's world. what is symphonic sound versus other sound. All right, carry, with the carry denser on. atmospheric conditions, uh, yep. sound would carry much better. Sure, and uh, and uh, you would have a more pristine context with the sands. You wouldn't have the alluvial. Just the way mixture. in the in the very 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 thick water, uh, by comparison to air, whales communicate halfway around the world. Oh, it's absolutely incredible. Yeah, so. so under these conditions, a friend of mine used sound and the appropriate nutrients, but uh, the sound was the uh, the determining factor because he used those uh, nutrients in a control context and didn't produce this. He produced a passion plant over 200 feet long. It ran through his home, <laughs> wound around uh, some of the walls in the home. Really? But now back to Dr. Morey's tomato plant. He used this context with additional atmospheric pressure, and he supplied additional carbon dioxide. Uh, and and what? Sound? Yeah. So we, I think, I don't think we're ever going to learn what symphonic sound is versus other sound, <laughs> <laughs> is... and how uh, how that is. Yeah, Dave, you know, symphonic beautiful. sound is one of the parameters of the universe. That is the thing we know. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yes, I did. Bingo. We will uh, we will return to the bingo cards in future episodes. We uh, was... we thought this was given that there would be very little mm. outside of you know of, of kind of. We've already got enough technical. Uh, yeah, we, we're in in the science. You want to change one variable at a time, is my understanding. If we lazy. decided with this with this broadcast here, I've changed like virtually every variable variable all at once. So that's how so you find pterodactyls, Paul. That's right. <laughs> so far, it's going okay. There's a few things I would wish would be better, but so far we're we're, we're making it happen. Yep. Happened was well, that happens. cherry tomato plant outlived him. Now that doesn't mean it was alive all his life, but it lived for more than a decade. Well, that's interesting. Now yours died after one season. One that's season. rather normal. But the fact that you had fantastic growth indicates I, the genetic potential is there. That's actually, the actually, doctor, it was nine hundred. It was probably more like thousands of tomatoes. Okay. I, I could bring my wife in right. Your story ain't nothing. <laughs> okay, you came back and you came up with all my plant left. It's at nine hundred, but it's a it lived a decade. Okay, well, mine wasn't really 900. It was probably Yeah, I more probably like... had like 2,000 tomatoes. <laughs> this feels like a couple of uh, jerks at a party. Yeah. That are just, yeah. Have you ever heard Brian Regan's... That, that was what I was quoting, the Brian Regan. Don't tell it the to The one him. about the moon? The... Oh, he, had, he has the wizard <laughs> dude. He also has the one about the uh, the people who walked on the moon and how it's like... Yeah, that's It's just right. the ultimate everything at party. It's like... Some guy is telling some loud story about a yacht he owns and this. He's like, oh, yeah? Well, I walked on the moon. I walked on I'm the sorry, moon. you were saying something about a boat? <laughs> <laughs> I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that is in the epitome of hyperbole yeah. special. Yeah. No, ep epitome of hyperbole. Yeah. yeah. Verify is true. It's true. And if you don't know who Brian Regan is, like his last couple of specials have been garbage, but yeah, uh, early Brian like, Regan, his his first couple of albums, kind of before they did comedy specials, back when the comedians used to release actual mm -hmm. albums, 
um he had oh he was he was the best he was the king yeah I, I believe you because you have really hit a secret art and i'm very serious the genetic potential is there if we can tap the genetic potential we can reproduce what we find in the fossil record everything was larger in the fossil record reptiles continue to grow as long as they live mammals do not man was large but he was not 14 16 feet tall how, how large well not uh, about 10 years ago what everything was bigger dave everything yeah except man Cells was very bigger. definitely smaller <laughs> We had uh, there were there were ten foot chipmunks, yeah, running around, yeah. On uh, a national broadcast, uh, secular broadcast, I heard of a girl in Mozambique who was thirteen years of age showed up at a mission station to get her inoculations. She was uh, thirteen years of age and was already ten feet four inches tall. Oh, no. now that no, demonst- no, that did that, not happen. That did not happen. Yep. That's uh, the Guinness, not true. I think I feel like the f- good folks at Guinness would have uh, would have wanted yeah. to know about that one. Reach the genetic potential. Max Palmer was a friend of mine big girl. until he died. Yes, big girl, and she had not even reached her growth spurt yet at age thirteen. You know. Wow. Uh, Max Palmer was. <laughs> wow. Why would you? Why? Okay, thirteen. You've definitely reached your growth spurt, but yeah. <laughs> Um. No, the, if this is a modern medical, like if this is a recent thing at a modern medical facility, someone would have taken a picture of the thirteen-year-old girl. <coughs> yeah, just I just googled it. Just for like, the tallest person on record mm-hmm. in the world is eight foot eleven, <laughs> which is very tall. That is a very very tall person. It is. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. No, she yeah. was she was ten foot something, uh, thirteen. No one, no one cared. There's no one, no one that didn't yeah, bother. Anyone. Nobody bothered. She definitely didn't end up on TMZ. No, eight feet two inches tall. Uh, his mother was five two. His father was maybe five six. Huh. Uh, that was aberrant. But the genetic potential is there now. There is a secondary, you ask, how how tall was man? How big could man get? Right. Mammals, including man, have a secondary genetic ossification process. When we reach maturity, the ends of our bones... Paul? S- yes. Is What is what is an ossification process? So, my, so I don't know what an ossification process... I didn't realize I had a, both a primary and a secondary ossification process. Process? Are we googling well, now? Ossification. You're the one that's supposed to know all about the chromosomes. And I the... am supposed to. So ossification disease. Hmm. Ossification. The process of bone formation. Okay. This process begins within the sixth and seventh weeks of embryonic development and continues until age twenty-five. Oh, so okay, so bones grow for a while, and he's saying that he, humans have potential for secondary in their life bone growth, like that we. I don't okay. think that's true, but okay. But he's saying that we have genetic potential for that. Okay. Okay, so those are hey, Doctor Do reference. Yes, Carl likes to use fancy. Should I read this one? When I, yes, read this one. Still using one point five speed while playing catch up to live ellipses. When I think about living forever, I think of me from Doctor Who. Mm-hmm. Good reference, absolutely. Um. Anyway, so I think we. Carl, I definitely uh, want to get into a Doctor Who conversation with Paul now because I know you've been watching Doctor Who lately. Yes, yeah, so though we just was recently watching Doctor Who, and uh, the 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 interesting episode we saw just last was the the episode where there was some it had Carl Carl Dickens Charles Dickens, and, right? Uh, Carl's on my brain, unfortunately. Tonight. Charles Dickens, and there was the the ga- the creatures that were traveling through gas lines. They're gaseous right. creatures from yes from a yes. Beach. And and I loved 
I actually really loved the like Charles Dickens as a skeptic. When I saw Doctor Who last, I was still a theist when I saw that episode last. Yeah. So I wouldn't have appreciated it as much. But um where basically we he these things that the people in the eighteen hundreds were thinking were angels were ultimately were were demons and like had 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 bad uh intent. It was rather delicious. I thought it was a good episode. And the girl who's the maid in that episode ends up becoming is one of the Torchwood? main cast members on Torchwood, which is why in the first episode of Torchwood, when the doctor meets me as a throwback, he's like, are you from this area? And she's like, oh, my family's lived here for blah, blah, blah. They give, they give some kind of line to kind of like, oh, yeah, yeah, that was one of my great, so, great, great, great grandma or something. Yeah. Weirdly, now we're just off yeah. on the weeds. And I'm sorry, everybody. Yeah, so now we're sorry, bad. everybody. <laughs> so, but Shannon has not seen Torchwood. For some reason, mm. uh, I tried to start her on Torchwood and she didn't enjoy it. Um, but I saw Torchwood before I saw Doctor Who. So anyway, that was yeah. I was literally just screaming at the TV. Yeah. <laughs> but then, but then, when she started making, she started recognizing things in the future, like she knew about metal birds that humans flew in and stuff. Um, then I was then in my mind I was starting to trying to think. Well, wait, is this the same character somehow? But no, you're right. It was. Yeah, just they they do a throwaway be, line in Torchwood too. It's meant to be an ancestor of yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. All right, back I to Carl Ball. Be psychic or whatever. So that's how she has those visions or whatever. Have you seen The Empty Child yet? Not yet. That's the first episode with Jack. Um, yeah, I think that's. Yeah, I think yeah. that one's actually next because it's a Bad Wolf episode coming up. That is the best episode of that season of Doctor Who. Anyways, well, if this stream ever ends, maybe I can get to it. But yeah, well, it won't. We're here forever. Nope. Dinosaurs close off, and that keeps us from growing the rest of our lives. That's good. You don't want a man twenty feet tall. Not if me. He's going to live to be two hundred years of age. Right. Uh, so also, we've excavated some footprints. People don't just keep growing through our whole lives. No, so... he's acknowledging that mammals don't have this, but reptiles. Oh, okay. Do. Yeah. Right. And there's a general ratio of seven to one in height to length of the foot, but that's average. Uh, you can get aberrant uh, details uh, that uh, would skew those results. Right. But on average. Yeah. On average, I think Adam and his uh, male colleagues were probably seven to seven and a half feet tall. I think Eve and her female colleagues were probably six to six and a half feet tall on average. So it was really easy for her to pick the apple. Uh, yes. <laughs> All right, once again, uh, Dr. Carl Edward Baugh. Dr. Baugh, uh, we have now a revived uh, Hubble telescope. And, uh, you know, it's... All right, that was, a, that was an ad break that just got too So I'm hoping we're getting to the call soon. I really want to hear what the audience says to Carl. Okay. We can push our, through. We it's can our deep interrupt. space version that we have um, in orbit uh, that is able to look back uh, in time. You know, you mentioned light and God and light and the word light and all that. They can look back, they say, 15 billion years uh, and maybe a little better than, better than that right now with the, with the newly revived uh, telescope. May, at least that. No, like it's 13.8 or whatever. Like it's not 15, but that's fine. Yeah. Yes, square foot law. Absolutely, we know as, as you know from. Uh, yeah, we would not yeah. work at those sizes. The it's the classic kaiju problem that. Like the truth is, even the people who are the very like the gentleman we taught that was eight foot eleven and and mm -hmm. go like there's a number of, it, life's not easy for them. No human body is uh, not like meant I, to work at that kind of heights. Yeah, right. And even uh, Peter Mayhew, who I knew a little bit, who played yeah. Chewbacca. Um, his life was just miserable and not because of like, not because the airplane thing was too small for him or the car. Like it was just literally, he had all kinds your of medical give out, your, your joints give out and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Our, our bodies are not designed to work at those. Nope. For 15 billion years now, you're maintaining that everything was was created 6,000 years ago. And they're saying they can look back 15 billion years. That's a Big, big difference. Yes, very interesting. Let's explore that. Okay. I received communication from Dr. David. <laughs> okay.
Okay. <laughs> okay. Doc Lee Ray, Senior Academician, Academy of Sciences, USSR. He is also was at that time a member of four other academies of science in the Eastern Bloc countries. His specialty is quantum algebra. Uh, he saw a, oh, a, a satellite program I was doing on television. Quantum quantum algebra, Dave. I nope. Pass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> We're not just solving algebra. Is just solving for variables. Yeah. Never heard of it. Don't know. I know of <laughs> no. quantum mechanics. I know but of algebra. A, yep. <laughs> quantum. He's professor of. He, you know, Dave. He's not just. Not just a, a big science guy in the USSR. He's the head of four other Eastern Bloc science. Yeah, in Soviet Russia. That, that literally Elton no one Brad's can look up Martin. or verify. Yep. And, in Soviet uh, Russia. He contacted me. So. <laughs> Soviet Russia. Algebra yeah. quantum zoo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's a good joke for anybody who's over 35. <laughs> I want you to be aware of, of the research that I've done. He took the parameters, the Einsteinian parameters, or the, all the physical parameters of the universe at our disposal, including the Einsteinian equations. Now, this is very important. Answer, answer to that question in the light of recent creation or the light of creation at all. Okay, try to make it so the average person can understand now. Gotcha. The Einsteinian equations essentially deal with the fact that matter, space, and time are all interrelated. If you alter matter, you alter space and time. If you alter space, you alter matter and time. If you alter time, you alter space and matter. Got the idea? Right. Well, uh, so Dr. Ray ran some quantum algebraic equations, and uh, he found that the further back in time he explored it with these equations, the more refined the universe became. NASA with a Hubble telescope... What do you mean refined? Uh, refined uh, became more orchestrated, uh, more attuned. I don't, know what, I don't know what that means. Okay. Uh, it, were things closer together? Um... Uh, yes, closer together, more symphonic. In fact, what uh, I saw uh, when I was at NASA... All right. So the, 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 the guy who... The professor of quantum algebra, <laughs> he plugged in all the equations, Dave, and this is important because he also plugged in the Einsteinian equations. That's just super important. Yeah. Uh... The further back in time he explored, not explored in real life, but explored through his equations, the more symphonic things got. The more tuned. The more tuned. You see, what's the unit of tuning? Mm. Art's kind of trying to nail him down to something. I know, right? It's like, yeah. what's the... I, I love Art in this one, because he's like, I don't yeah. know what that means. Like, what does yeah, it what does what, that mean? Does it mean closer together? <laughs> Oh, Timothy well, Harmon, yes. sorry, Tim, my apologies, Tim. Tim, is trying to explain to us what quantum algebra actually is. You might have somebody that who knows. It's one of the top level mathematics categories used by the, I think this is made up. It might be. It's the study of non-communicative analogies and generalizations of, yeah, no. I feel like, I think Tim's pulling our leg here. It's possible. I'm. I was drinking well before the stream even started. So, mm, you know, perfect. I'm a pretty easy okay. person to fool right now. Well, let's see if Art can solve our problem because Art's being the skeptic here now. He's like, I don't even know what that means. Yeah. <laughs> I saw some of the hardware that now is in existence out in space or now is placed in space. It was in existence at NASA headquarters in Greenbelt, Maryland at that time. Oh, right, uh, what Dr. NASA Ray like found was, so the further back in time we went, the more orchestra uh, further back in time he went in the calculations, the more orchestrated the entire universe became. What NASA is now finding is a result of explosion. In fact, they admit on their website, things are decaying. Entropy, the second law of thermodynamics, is really being fulfilled. We have galaxies. Why is NASA talking about entropy on their website? I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm having a hard time. I th right. think what you're trying to say is things were more organized before and are less organized now. 
which is clearly can't be true because plants are like, for example, are an organizing, like plants are an anti-entropy machine. Yeah. They convert sunlight to usable energy. It's, I mean, I don't, I don't know. All right. Fair (laughs) enough. Because it's also, that's a very vague sentence. And if you look at like a universal scale, (laughs) it's, I mean, depending what you use, how you define some of these things, it's like, it could be true or it could be not. Well, yeah, that's where he's like, yeah, no, things were more, he wasn't trying to say that they were a little more chaotic or whatever. He wants to use a word like, no, they were more symphonic. It's like, well, okay. You can never, never prove that. If galaxies but, but all that's consistent with the Big Bang, though. No, just the opposite. The Big Bang begins with chaos and attempts to explain that out of chaos comes order. You never get the Reader's Digest published from an explosion in a print shop. You have to begin with information and orchestration. The explosion doesn't work. Well, then you're going to have to find a more elegant way to describe this orchestration. What are you talking about? Are you saying things were, how are they different? Uh, in, 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 as you go back with his algebra, how are things different? Are they closer together? What? Much closer together because with the dilation, with the uh, expansion of the space fabric, you have dilation of time. So we ran that backward as only algebraic, uh, quantum algebraic equations can do. I mean, it's a... I looked up quantum algebra here. Uh, oh, Tim yeah. was quoting the Wikipedia. Yeah, he was there. trying. He said after he that the chat won't let him put the foot yeah. full quote in. It's the study of non-communicative analogs and generalization of communi- communicative algebras, especially those arising in lie theory, which I'm not familiar with. Um, all right. So yeah, neither Paul nor I are mathematicians, so we're no. Gonna... Uh, but also. Like, this is the shortest Wikipedia article I've ever seen. Mm. Like, this is is really not. Yeah. Well, but, like, is it a... It literally has one reference on the bottom. Like, the only... It's it's referenced in one place. I'm not convinced this is necessarily a widespread, common, useful thing. I also love the old, uh, you know, it's like... A big bang it's like oh well you're not going to get the reader's digest from an explosion at a print shop mm. so obviously you can't just have the order of the universe from an explosion of matter and it's like, okay well that's not really <laughs> the same thing at all that's not the claim nope mm. it's light years beyond uh, standard math okay and, and they're it's light year, you know, yeah. Light years is a distance. Is a... <laughs> I guess that's I mean, maybe what he means. It's a distance. It's a. It's a, it's a metaphor. I'll, I'll cut him slack on that one. Only a handful Pardon. of people proficient. We only have two: Dr. Frank Tipler and someone else in the U.S. proficient in this. But they have a handful in the Eastern Bloc countries. All right. So what we what we see today is chaos. If we reverse the order, everything is running away from us. It is expanding from us in every direction. Right. Well, that's true. consistent re- with Big Bang, too. Well, if you reverse the order, yes. it comes closer more rapidly. In fact... Oh, you mean uh, not in a linear... It's fashion. non-linear. Uh, it's okay, well, it, but it would, be, it, it, would be, it would be non-linear. If there was an explosion, when there's any explosion, even here on Earth, you have an explosion, boom, things, nails, if it's a nail bomb, for example, the nails are traveling at an extreme speed uh, in seconds, uh, with, with milliseconds after the explosion. But then they begin immediately decaying in speed and velocity. But uh, what we find in the universe is just the opposite. The most distant objects are receding from us at an accelerating rate. So when you reverse this, Hmm. put it back together, uh, so we have not only the expansion of space fabric, but the dilation of time. Art, what this gives us is a scenario where on planet Earth, and Earth is at or near the center of this universe because we have Dr. Margaret Geller of Harvard and NASA demonstrated. No, wait a minute. I've seen pictures, and Earth is way on the outskirts. Of the Milky Way galaxy. Right. 
I mean, we're really in the rule territory here from that point of view. But not the universe as a whole. Okay. We're, we're on the arm of Orion of the Milky Way galaxy, a very fortunate position. Again, this was designed, if we were nearer the center of the galaxy or nearer the, uh, the beginning of the arm, there would be so many stars around us, we would have no idea where we were. But being in this position, we can actually map the universe. And that is what Dr. Margaret Keller has done. So we're the center of it. We're at or near the center of the universe as a whole. What no. she has found is... Nope. And <sighs> nope. No. So I think it was Carl Sagan, actually, that, that came up with some of the diagrams for these where, 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 you can sh where you kind of show that when you have dots that are moving away from each other, that every single dot, from the perspective of that dot, that it appears like you are the center of the universe. Yes. Um, because everything's expanding away from you. Yeah. So there's really no way to. Yeah. Yes. Um, and it's very much a observable universe. There's a lot. Yeah. It, it's right. And, and unfortunately we, we don't have the option of, of moving our perspective away from our universe to, to, to give ourselves the alternate perspective that would reveal to us positionally where we are. Yeah. But yes, but literally even the people who are on crazy on the edge, it'll appear to them like they are in the center as well. Yeah. 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 Published in the technical literature that there are seven concentric shells of galactic star bodies surround. No. No one from NASA wrote about seven collective concentric shells of concentric shells of star bodies. That didn't happen. Nope. What did I say? Uh, collective. Oh, okay. Thank you for correcting me. I'm always here to point out your mistakes. All directions. You go out in space, <laughs> very few it. star bodies. Then you come up against a wall, an extreme wall of galaxies and star bodies. Then in space, very few stars, another wall. Seven of these concentric shells or rings or spheres all together. Now, back to your original question. With the Einsteinian equations showing that if the space fabric is expanding, and it's expanding at an accelerated rate, you reverse that, and uh, as it expands currently, time is dilated. So uh -huh. at or near the center, okay. very little is happening in time. Okay. But the further out in space you go, or the farther out in space you go, the more time, the time space is, fabric is expanding. It's time, is, time is stretching. Time is stretching. That's so an easy way to very, put it so people can understand. <laughs> yeah. So there probably are. No. That's not how that works. Yeah. No. Uh, the, the relativity of time doesn't yet. It, like it has to do with gravity, right? Um, yes. And speed and relativity and your time. See, the whole thing is like, it's relative. It's the theory of relativity. It's, mm -hmm. but so the time is fine to you, but time is, not necessarily the way you perceive time is not necessarily the same way somebody else perceives time right and over distances and the best explanation i've ever heard of it ever is like if you're on a train moving close to the speed of light because you can never go faster than the speed of light right mm -hmm. and you have a light on the roof of the train and you turn it on and it's like the room will light up in the time that it takes light to travel around mm -hmm. everywhere. Right. And the speed of light is constant. That's, that's one of the key underpinnings to Einstein is like the speed of light is the speed of light. It's always the same, no matter what. So it's, you know, very tiny fractions of a second, but there is a time that it takes for the light to travel from the light of the roof to the floor of the chamber and then bounce back to your eyes and you will see the floor of the chamber. If you are standing outside of the train, as the train goes by, so if you're inside, it's like, okay, this light came down. It's moving at the speed of light, whatever, 198,000 miles a second, whatever. I can't remember what the speed of light is. Down and up to your eyes, straight line down, straight line back. Shortest path, great. 
I'm standing outside watching this train go by oh, as yeah, okay. somebody turns on the light, right? So mm -hmm. the line the light takes is like it starts here and it's now moving at an angle because the train is moving. Mm -hmm. So because the speed of light is constant, mm -hmm. it actually takes longer for that room to light up to me outside because the distance the light has to travel is farther because it is traveling at angles now instead of straight lines. It's easier if you can actually visually see it. No, 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 no but, but you, you're yeah. doing a good job. You're doing a good job. Yeah. I, I'm with you. So to me, outside watching the train, it's taking longer for this room to light up than for the person who is inside moving at the same speed as the train. And that's kind of relativity in a nutshell, is that depending where you are, what speed in the universe you're moving, what the gravity is, a whole bunch of things, time is relative things are relative distance can be relative all of these things are flexible they're not as firm as they seem when you're standing where you are the only thing that's constant is the speed of light and that's the thing you can use to kind of be a guide which is why you get that whole like well if you're traveling close to the speed of light and come back you will not have aged as much as somebody who is right you know just standing yeah, at a, at a slower speed and you get to what they call relativistic speeds and all kinds of weird things start happening. That's basically what that means. That's okay. the implication of the theory of relativity. All right. Well, I'm trying to get us the callers, so off we go. Yeah, off we go. Sorry, that was a long... Or do you, should I just jump ahead and find the callers? We can. I think we've kind of <laughs> figured out this guy doesn't know what the heck he's talking about. All right, what does the audience think? Does the audience want me to jump ahead to I'll I'll keep playing, but if the audience wants we'll me keep to jump playing, ahead to callers, the chat. Yeah, let me know in the chat if you want to jump ahead or just keep going. At the outer edges of uh, galactic areas of the universe, 15 billion years of time elapsed because the space fabric stretched stretched and time dilated but all of that within a six thousand year, year period framework uh -huh. uh, wow yeah, that's not okay. how that works at all <laughs> <laughs> yep. although i have heard a lot of creationists trying to use because there are verses like in psalms where where it says god stretched the heavens and they like to just oh try and play with that oh the bible gives us an excuse that god was stretching something in a way i'm more sympathetic to that view of like well god just did this and it's just like right. well, i if guess you just want to say right yeah exactly. if you're already in like if you're all in on god it's just like you can you know it's like if the magic's real a wizard did it you're like <laughs> well i guess right i mean i can't really argue with that yeah well, I don't know if it's okay. <laughs> yeah, but, it, it, uh, but it is consistent with the data. And that's what Dr. William Ray found. It's consistent with the data. If we're, uh, but there is attendant data. If we're consistent with our academic research, we must add to that the decay of Earth's magnetic field. Art, this is very important. But remember, the dinosaurs died. I mean, universally, science says. 60 some odd million years ago, right? Uh, 64 million according to standard theory. There you are. However, yes. if you will visit the Kachina Bridge at Natural Bridges National Monument, just out of Blanding, Utah, uh -huh. I was there three and a half weeks ago for the eighth time, taking a group of uh, scholars to see. There is a panel placed there by the Anasazi Indians. The Anasazis appeared 300 B.C. on the North American continent, disappeared 1299 A.D. in a terrible drought. We know the exact year they disappeared. Uh -huh. So they were only on the North American continent some 1,600 years. On this panel, with desert varnish covering all the panel, desert varnish accumulates over centuries. It requires long centuries to accumulate pollen. Uh, yes. I'm just, I don't know, whatever. So the this chat story is gonna go ahead. Yeah, uh, the chat seems to be in favor of us just keeping the stream going all weekend long because apparently none of them need to sleep. <laughs> all right, fair enough. Um, uh, so they're all in favor of us just listening to all of this and listening to the chat after. There's okay, a couple. You know, well, we can do. We can do. You know, we have precedent. We we, we can do a part two if it comes to that. Um, yeah. How so far are we in right now? We are roughly we're. 
42 minutes into an hour and 36 minute file. So like half ish. What do you feel like friend? Oh, I, I'm, ha I'm happy to go with, uh, with whatever the, whatever you, like, I, I feel like you and I will just go until one of us is done. Mm -hmm. When one of us taps out, we just tap out. Um, if, if, the, if the audience doesn't specifically want to, if the audience is enjoying this part and doesn't care as much about the calls, I don't know that I haven't heard them. I don't know that the calls are better. I just kind of feel like it might be fun interactions between. Oh, well, here we go. Oh, you have more beverage, so you're good. I'm getting <laughs> more Czech beer delivered to me. Okay. That's good. Well, let's just keep it rolling then until uh, until the audience decides that we need to fast forward. We'll just keep playing. Well, there um, we go. Yeah. Charged right. dust accumulates over there. You can't do it in a matter of decades. On this panel... Uh, Etched into the rock by the Anasazis is a warrior, and the warrior has... All right, because in case our talking interrupted this, whatever story this is about this placard that has yeah. been has resin built up over centuries is going to prove to us that whatever science says about when dinosaurs died is garbage. Yes. <laughs> All right, I'll be right back. Keep going. Okay. To his lower left... A Tenontosaurus dinosaur being observed. Hmm. It has the bulk body, the long bulk tail, the long neck, uh, the face, the mouth, and the eye. We can even identify the dinosaur. Uh, most of the people in the audience would say that's a Brontosaurus. Well, Brontosaurus is a misnomer, but that's the type dinosaur. Uh, Brontosaurus, but due to the bulk of his tail, we know he was a Tenontosaurus dinosaur. In order to represent him so faithfully, those Anasazis had to see such a creature. And we have at the museum in safety deposit, we're building our... Pro I don't think so. So, first of all, you're telling me that some random shape that was drawn on a plaque by First Nations people looks like a brontosaur. And he admits that, yeah, it's, Brontosaur isn't really a class anymore. That's fine. We'll just leave it be. So roughly, yeah, you guys would know that, like, roughly it's a, it almost looks like a bell curve at that point. Like when you're, when you'd be drawing one, whatever he, some, so someone drew one. And the only possibility of the, that this drawing could even exist is that someone actually saw this thing. It couldn't be a fantasy. It couldn't be that they found bones and knew that roughly there was creatures, dead creatures that look roughly like this. Dave. Yeah. What have I missed? The sign. Mm -hmm. the, it was ostensibly created in, in 300 BC. Um, was it had a, it had a brontosaurus drawn on it, Dave. Okay. You know, brontosaurus is our real Paul. Well, he had acknowledged that Brontosaurus as a class isn't really a thing. He still called oh, okay. them that anyway. I think, I think to to dumb it down as Art keeps wanting people to do. He knows Fair all enough. the fancy words. He he knows that Brachiosaurus are the real thing. But uh, the only way, so I'm like, okay, so there's like a bell curve style shape on this thing. Okay, right. The only reason, the only way that could be explained, Dave, is if they actually saw one. Um, there is no other explanation. And this is some bag found in the desert? No, a, a, pl a plaque, a piece of wood. Oh, okay. Yeah. It has like a bell curve sort of shape on it. That weird. Yes. And that's a, that, and that is a, that is clearly a brontosaur, brachiosaur. Clearly a brachiosaur, brontosaur. I'm going to call it a brontosaurus. I had a toy brontosaurus when I was a kid and I'm sure. sticking with it. Uh, yeah. So again. And he had uh, amazing yeah. advantages on Pluto. Fuck you, science. <laughs> So, but the only way this shape, this weird shape on this thing could be, and it's not like just a, it's not just a badly drawn, like maybe I've seen kids trying to draw, like some people don't draw very well. Like if you're trying to draw a dog, it's like, well, that would be, a, that's not a creature I would even recognize. Anyway, there's only one so anyways, explanation. Yes. So the only explanation for this is that he actually, the, the artist 
whoever saw created one. the plaque literally with their own eyes saw a brachiosaurus living not even a dead one with skeleton the river just a living one we have no evidence of this creature living and so we have every other bit of science that tells us the dinosaurs passed away 65 million years ago is tens of millions of years ago yeah Mm -hmm. to hundreds of millions of years ago Um, also of course it's trivially true i feel like but creationists don't understand this like let's say he goes to where was he going papua new guinea to Papua find New the, Guinea. Yep. Yep. That's where he was searching for the pterodactyls. He was looking for pterodactyls, but I also know that they were looking for other people who have been looking for Makio Membe, Mateo Membe, whatever the, the cryptid people are looking for brontosaurs as well. Okay. Yep. Little ones, but like, so anyway, it doesn't matter. Like, let's say they found one tomorrow. Yeah. That tells us literally nothing about evolution. Like, evolution no. doesn't require that any species goes extinct. No. Which is why, like, when they found the coelacanth, like you referenced earlier. Yeah. Everyone's like, oh, well, evolution must be wrong. No, it was just like, oh, we didn't we didn't do a proper survey and know that they were all No, the coelacanths are still alive. (laughs) Like, Like, am I wrong that sharks and, like, crocodiles are Mm -hmm. essentially unchanged for, like, tens... Tens and tens of millions of years. Correct. Yeah. No. They find they have they have like two hundred million year old fossil sharks that are very 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 similar. And and like aren't crocodiles and alligators kind of in that same thing too? Where they're like, yeah, oh yeah, no, absolutely, we're freaking yeah. absolutely alive when dinosaurs lived and are still pretty much the same deal. And basically, yeah. you know, the the things don't need to evolve if there isn't selection pressure for them to change. So things that are suited to their environment and their environment doesn't change. Yeah. They figured it out and just they were good. They figured it out. Yeah. All right. So um, I am going to dip out for one sec. Yep. Do you want me to, do you want to just interact with the chat? Do you want me to keep it playing and you have you talk over it? What do you want me to do? There's all these beautiful people here. Let's interact with the chat. Okay. You can interact with the chat, but you won't be able to pull them up on screen, unfortunately. Mm-mm. All right. I'll be back in a minute. I'll just talk about them loudly. Hello, chat. Well, I do believe, perfect one, that Carl Baugh did claim to him and many, uh, what was it, 20-some-odd eyewitnesses saw a pterodactyl, sorry, a pterodactyl in Papua New Guinea. So he has actually, according to him, seen a dinosaur. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry you have to go sleep. Drathridge? But sleep is important. It's important. I I won't ever encourage anybody. Hello, Eric. Hello, John. Look, Dapper Dinosaur, don't tell that to Carl Baugh. You'll, You'll break his little heart. Bless. The giant lizard things that lived tens of millions of years ago. That's dinosaur enough for me. Yes, absolutely. Dragonflies have been unchanged for a very long. There's actually a number of them, creatures that have, animals that have essentially remained unchanged for a very, very long time. This is why we need you, Dapper Dinosaur. Uh, what do we got here? You guys are going to miss out. Everyone who's going to sleep is going to miss out on the amazing calls coming up. A secret about Paul. Oh, boy. I don't know. I feel like I need to marshal. I don't have that many secrets about Paul, and I need to save them for like really exceptional circumstances maybe maybe for like a really special or really really good super chat i'm not going to give away that shit you know free on stream that's Mm. paper right there yeah my really good paul stories are are precious precious gems 
I know what they're worth, and I'm not going to give them away for free. <laughs> That's right. My secret about Paul is he's only seen one Hellraiser movie. Can you believe that? Is that true, Paul? Have you only ever seen one Hellraiser movie? That is correct. To be fair, if you've seen one Hellraiser movie, you've kind of seen every Hellraiser movie. <laughs> and if the one you've seen is the first one, you have actually seen the best Hellraiser movie. And no, just unfortunately kind of... not. I've, I've, the, the most recent one is the one that I've seen. So, Oh, that is really, that is a genuine shame. Because the first one is actually kind of an interesting, good movie. And there's this really cool effect they did. So it was like 80? I don't remember what year the first Hellraiser movie came out. And they do this thing when the Cenobites first show up and they created like wax sculptures of them and melted them and then did it in reverse for how they oh neat appear. And it's actually a really, really cool effect. And one of those things where they like how they did in pra- you know, like, well, we only have practical effects. CG mm-hmm. doesn't exist. And how do you come up with these cool things? And it was like, uh, uh, certainly at the time it was like, oh, wow, this is really, really cool. And it was like actually done like, so they did like, bones and flesh like there were different layers so like as they melted you would see these different things come I mean, it was a, it was a very very cool effect when the Cenobites very first show up in the first movie but i recently discovered a channel where some uh, actively in the in the industry working in the industry computer effects people they take a weekend and they attempt to recreate beloved scenes from like the 80s and 90s Mm -hmm. but they only have, they give themselves like two days to do the shot. So they have to recreate. So I saw one, they did the trench run. I saw one where they did like the T in T2 where, um, the, the T1000 is going through morphs through the jail bars. (laughs) And it's, and it's just, it's so, it's so terribly sad because I worked in visual effects. Right. And it's just what they're doing now. It's like, yeah, literally like 24 hours. Yeah. We recreated the shot and we made it look better by doing X, Y, and Z. We just used the unreal engine. Right. Right. It's just, (laughs) yeah. Yeah. Uh, and they they always are incredibly like, they're always incredibly generous with the people who did the original shot and point out like all the, constraints that they would have had but it is painful to watch now all right back to uh, are we ready are you are you done in yeah. the chat can we people uh, are pointing out my mistakes there was it was not the center bites it was frank yes they're you're you're right i'm sorry yeah um anyways also onward. i feel like i feel like this i don't feel like there's enough information with this question to answer I think there is. Well, Here's depends the on the question. The depends, like on, depends on the question. Mm-hmm. Mm. Deposit. We're building our permanent facility, uh, so we have to keep much of our treasures in safety deposit for security purposes. We have some of the original stones retrieved from the graves of the Peruvian plains, of the Nazcas, Incas, and Tiwanakas practiced uh, memorializing their nobles by uh, etching onto rock uh, their exploits and their deeds. We have three of these stones that have dinosaurs that are so specific. Uh, The critics said when these... Okay, do you know what Ica stones are, Dave? Yes, I do. So the thing about Ica stones is that um, tourists who visit the region Mm -hmm. love to buy them. Yeah. But there are not that many of them. No. So the, the locals have completely taken to just making them. And they're certainly not selling. The, the ones that exist aren't just being sold on like right. markets. And, yeah. So, um, so and the, another thing that th- has sort of come to pass is people, the locals figured out that the ones that have dinosaurs on them. Yeah. Sell better. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, many of the creationists in the 80s and 90s kind of fell to the Ica stones went until it kind of became, there There were ways to figure out that this was just like straight up varnish from the hardware store. Yeah. yeah. So these are largely, have since, but way before 2002, these would have been debunked. But as a, as yeah. a thing, is like, not all Ica stones are false, but such a high percentage of them are just fake. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I 
I'm delighted now. That's what that. <laughs> okay, so some of these have very specific dinosaurs. Yeah, because people in yeah. 1996 painted them. Yeah. Yep. These were first uncovered. Well, we don't know how they represented a Triceratops dinosaur. Don't know how they represented pterodactyls <laughs> and an Allosaurus. Or but also, if even if any of them were genuine, again, you're seeing what they're creating, painting as myth mythological. They're versions of mythological creatures going on these things. Yeah. So, anyway. T-Rex uh, and an Ankylosaurus and a Stegosaurus. But they did. But they did down to the rosette patterns and the dermal frills. Now, the critics said, oh, uh, these are stylized because they have dermal frills up their spinal column and they have rosette patterns on their skin. But in 1992, in Europe, a cache of dinosaurs was discovered and they found an extension protruding up the spinal column it's called a process, technically. Uh, the spinal column of these uh, sauropod dinosaurs to hold the dermal frills, and they also had skin impressions. We have oh. some actual skin and safety deposit from Bolivia uh, extended to us through official sources that has the rosette patterns in the dinosaur skin. These individuals had to actually see these creatures in relatively recent times now back to the earth's magnetic i feel like any actual paleontologist is just like <laughs> pulling their hair out and screaming at the radio indeed at this point. yeah <laughs> again the it's my it's my common complaint where where someone's saying well my explanation is the only one that's even possible stop trying yeah. to imagine other ones field in the age of all this. Dr. Thomas Barnes, who died just a few months ago, uh, at the time he did this research, was head of physics department, um, University of Texas at El Paso. In 1829, Carl Gauss of Germany first began to measure the Earth's magnetic field. And uh, after he died, others took over the job, and it's been measured, and the data that I'm going to relate to you... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Daniel field has been examined since 1829. Dr. Thomas Barnes measured it and calculated that we are losing the field at an exponential rate, and every 1,400 years, we lose one half the energy. What this means to the practical layman is, 1,400 years ago, this field was twice as... Is he so talking about magnetic fields again? Every 1,400 years? He went, he went back to magnetic fields again, and he said it, it, yeah. apparently the magnetic field does a half-life of 1,400 years. I don't know if that's yeah, true or not. It's complete nonsense. I don't, I don't feel like it's going on a decay rate, of uh, like a nuclear decay rate. But I'm sure you could find some point in history where you could look at a 1,400-year period and it would be, it would have lost that much strength. But like you said, it jumps up and down and goes out like it's not yeah. a... Yeah, it's not uh, it's not purely on an equation because there's physical factors involved. But anyway. yes, fourteen hundred years ago, this field was twice as powerful as it is today. Fourteen hundred years before that, four times as powerful as it is today. Fourteen hundred years before that, eight times as powerful as it is today. Pretty sure that's not Art, right. If we go back anything approaching twenty thousand, no, all, all things are itself. linear, Dave. Just the, that's the way that works. Yeah, like yeah, if you I'm pretty sure. If you, like if a person gained twenty pounds during COVID, then you work backwards. <laughs> yeah, you could say in nineteen ninety six they weighed forty pounds. You can just say me, Paul. That's fine. <laughs> and then you could say in yeah, and then clearly in nineteen ninety nineteen ninety two they weighed eighty pounds less. And you, it's just this. That's all things are just that's the way it works. All things are clocks in linear fashion. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That field would have had the intensity of a magnetic star. Not only could molecules necessary for life not have held together, but many of the atoms necessary for living systems could not have held together in that context. So while right. we have a mindset... <laughs> what? What? That if the Earth's magnetic field was... That many times stronger, the atoms couldn't hold together. Is that's that right. You... That's the that's the, because atoms, as we all know, atoms even in deep space rely on the Earth's atmospheric conditions to hold together. 
Or that if there's too strong a magnetic field, the atoms will come apart somehow? Is that how fission works? Gosh, I grossly misunderstood that. The, uh, yeah, the strong, and weak the strong and weak nuclear forces are dependent on pressure, apparently. No, they're not yeah. for anyone no. who's tuning in. Of antiquity and extreme ages, when we deal with the facts, we have recency in all of this. And on the universal scale with the, uh, the expansion of the, the stretching of the space fabric and the dilation of time, even those 15 and a half billion years that are probably there in deep space got there because of the accelerated rate of the stretching of space fabric and the accelerated rate all right, all right, of the right, dilation right. of time. Try and explain this for me. Um, our early space probes, which are now leaving uh, our area, you know, they're just way out there now. Sure. Are all of a sudden experiencing a slowing. Something that the scientists cannot explain appears to be actually slowing them down. Now, how would that fit into your okay. picture? That's very interesting because uh, inertia can't explain that. A friction cannot explain that. They talk about dark matter. That might, something like that might explain it. Who knows? But, but they are slowing. Uh, dark matter is uh, still speculation. It's it's needed if we're going to explain. Uh... So to be serious for a second, I mean, aren't those usually caused by things going through unexpected gravitational wells? Like unexpected, like they pass by something more closely than they just thought that it was going to? Um, yeah, there is also, like there are essentially currents in space like there is a a very definite boundary to our solar system and there is an effect of passing through it and there is the interstellar medium and there's gases and electromagnetic waves and things that flow from other stars and around like space is not a total total vacuum and there are right right yeah yeah like when he, when he says it's like, well, it is actually is friction and kind of like things that affect, you know, so there's things like solar sails, which are a real thing, mm -hmm. which really do work. And they work off of, you know, this kind of, there, there are forces that exert on things in space um, and slow them down, speed them up. Uh, gravity is one of them, but gravity is not the only one. There's also just a generic. No, yeah, no, but I, I just, and in, I just vaguely recall, actually, there was some like, I don't know if it was Planet X or one of the things like, but there's occasionally they've like made discoveries of bodies by, oh, that we didn't expect this amount of gravity to be there, but later we found it, oh, there was this body there. And now we know, you know, that there was just gravity. Anyway. Yeah. Um, Voyager probes were being slightly pushed off. Well, we, I saw, I saw Star Trek, the motion picture, and I know that the Voyager probes... <laughs> were captured by aliens, so... And also, Anakin2448 lets us know that strong nuclear forces that bind atomic elements together can be overcome by extreme magnetic forces only in magnetars. So you're talking about magnetic forces that are like far, far, far in excess of what you would encounter in any Honor. kind of natural. Yeah. But there you go. I did not know that. The universe in evolutionary terms, but no one yeah, has ever found the exactly. dark matter. So that yet. probably doesn't explain it. Yet. Uh, yet. But again, that's speculation. So in my opinion, it appears that the expansion of the universe, the entire universe, is slowing. It, it, it accelerated in the past, oh. but the slowing of our um, space probes is a near earth verification that probably on a universal scale the acceleration is slowing now we see the acceleration through the hubble telescopes for this reason we're not seeing the objects we're seeing the image of those objects yeah, the light uh, the light and the signals coming back it could have been generated uh, thousands of years ago at the time of the flood and due to the expansion of space fab uh, space fabric would actually have tired or matured into billions of years of time. You know, did wait the, the wow. amount of water on Earth cause this? There's a like a 
the expansion of the universe is not slowing it's speeding up no it's speeding up for sure yeah that's that is as, as you know very uh, viable yeah, and, and of course yeah like via redshift and all these kind of things you can tell that and of course uh, you wouldn't actually get this thing over like the course of six thousand years. The changes we see you wouldn't, wouldn't be no. present. But okay, well, I guess we're just not going to go with. It. We don't have time to talk about everything that's wrong if we get to the callers. <laughs> yeah, it's just. I think it's just safe to say it's like this guy is. It's. It, we can this just is why, if, if anyone's tuning everything. in late, let me re let me reiterate. <laughs> Carl <laughs> Baugh is someone that Ken Ham had to warn his. It war had answers in Genesis had to put an official warning saying that he was um both deceptive and what was the other phrase that I used? Deceptive and uh I don't know, dishonest or you know, ina ina inaccurate and deceptive was was the yeah. and and Creation Mysteries International similarly put out a warning about Carl Boss saying, Yeah, don't don't arguments that he makes, don't use those. So, yeah, so this is the essential like the extreme edge of the young earth creationists are mm. like oh yeah that guy that guy's crazy <laughs> that's right <laughs> yeah yeah there are no there are no dinosaurs in papua new guinea that's mm -mm. we we aren't on board with that <laughs> doctor to to and i and i understand what you're saying but aren't you required uh to walk out on a shorter scientific plank than uh, th than uh, uh, the evolutionists to get where you need to go to try and prove that uh, you know we've only been here six thousand years. I mean, you're on a much shorter plank than they are, really. Well, if these were all the data we had, it would be a shorter plank, and you're off into the deep blue. But there is a tremendous body of data. For instance, I published a book. Against all odds, why do men believe evolution? You mentioned that at the top of the program. Yes. Why do men believe evolution against all odds? Because yes. in the past, I believed and taught the theory of evolution. When we look at the physical data, now, my degrees are not in geology or paleontology, but I do dig dinosaurs in the earth. And We don't know what your degrees are in. <laughs> Good cheer. In, yeah, he has two Hope for all degrees mankind. from a... From a place that just sells degrees straight up. I have a PhD in dinosaur hunting and the paperwork from the <laughs> That's right, and, uh, yeah, U.S. Agricultural Department to back it up. Correct. Uh, a very scientific program. Uh, obviously, you the, do. The, the biosphere. So as we explore the Earth, we come up with incredible objects. All right, in all right. Book, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I've got to hold it here. We're at the bottom of the hour. In the movie Contact... Carl Baugh is very much alive. Chat. Yes, Somebody Carl Baugh is. He's like 80, he's 82 now, something like that. Uh, like, this sentence feels like it's dirty, it's dirty, but it's not. <laughs> nope. Nope. So, sorry, Jay Morris. One of my favorite of all. Well, that was an ad break, so hopefully, that was an ad break, so hopefully we're getting to callers. That's getting what I, to the that's callers. Hope. Okay. Callers, and, I'm excited. So, uh, and again, my my enthusiasm for the callers may be entirely misplaced because I have not heard the episode, so I don't yeah, know. They, the callers might very much be on his side. It's hard to say. It's true. It's it's entirely true. Again, um, of course, one of the lines uh, toward the... What's that Art movie? Bell did not screen calls. No. So there was, you never know what you're going to get when somebody calls in. Yeah. End of the movie uh, was, you know, as you look up at the night sky, if um, all that is up there, all those suns, all those planets, and, and they are there, uh, whether you believe Dr. Ball's explanation of, you know, the length of time they've been there, or evolutionists or Big Bang people or whatever, they are, the fact of the matter is, they are there. So... A really good question for Dr. Ball would be, I think the line was, uh, if, if there's not life out there, then uh, boy, what an incredible waste of space. Now, it's required of me, Doctor, to ask you, uh, is it, I mean, we just got news about Mars. Oh my God, the, the water on Mars. There's tons of water on Mars. Uh, NASA just found out, and where you have water and where you have volcanic action, you probably have some form of uh, uh, very small life, at least. Now, as you look out to all the stars, which are actually suns, and all the planets that must be going around them, we're finding more and more planets, um, 
isn't it almost inevitable that there are other life forms out there on other planets elsewhere? Let's address that question. Yes, I let's. like it. First oh, of good, all, good. the space and the star bodies uh, are not useless. Dr. Michael Denton, the world-class scholar, published recently uh, stating that astrophysicists have found that all of the motion, galactic motion in deep space on all sides of us is absolutely necessary for the gravitational attraction and the, mo the inertial motion. All of that is necessary for us to move. See, my motion was not necessary. It was absolutely necessary. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Uh, Dave, okay. I also Whatever. Was here, I was... This is nonsense. I was going to message you. I don't know how you, you're, you were not obligated to, you know, when you let me, let me know when you're, when you're done. Oh, I'm good. I mean, you're, it's considerably later where you are than I am. It is 3.20. I have yeah. a while in me yet though, so I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to hear these callers. All right. Move a little finger or bat an eyelash. Okay. If those things were not number one in motion, number two in balance, at, in deep space, then it would require the horsepower of a farm tractor to move a finger. Not only that, to stop it would require the same horsepower. All right, but the same case the could be made for... What are you talking for... about? This is nonsense. This is complete and utter nonsense. He's just throwing out if all of the 15 billion light years away there weren't galaxies doing stuff, you'd need a tractor to move a finger. What? Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> that's a wonderful metaphor but has absolutely no basis in any physical reality in no. which we live no 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 oh they say you drank vice rhino on vice rhino under the table i did i he was uh i was a little embarrassed for him he he didn't didn't hold his liquor as well as i did wow all right well i'm proud of you paul yeah, but uh, in this content, we all know in this in this room, I can't. My my crippling alcohol addiction has put me in good stead for <laughs> that. I'm maybe fifteen drinks in today, and I'm pretty yeah. fucked right now. I am. Uh, I have zero chance. But for lizard intelligence on Zeta Reticula. Uh, however, we have no evidence that lizard intelligence is there. In fact, I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying that if there's intelligence elsewhere, you could say the same combination of things in the universe must be, be true for us to be um, crawling around on all fours and having a great time of it here on uh, whatever planet we're talking about. Yes. Right? If it were possible for life to evolve, then you have stated a probability, not only possibility, a probability. But the fact is, it is not possible for life to evolve. That's the key. That's the reason I published the book uh, Against All. It's just not possible, Dave. It's, it's, not it's possible. in my category of things that I like. Your where it's just... <laughs> hard. You're talking about probabilities, <laughs> not hard, verified facts like me. And fact number one is evolution's impossible. Well, Paul, that's right. I don't know what you. I don't know that own because own. I don't know if you read the title of my book earlier. <laughs> <laughs> but it's people who believe evolution, <laughs> despite all the evidence, despite. Um, I don't know what thongs cost, Paul, and I don't want to know. But I'm pretty know. sure it's more than two dollars. But I've I never, still appreciate I have not been... the chat very much. Well, no, well, no. I feel like this is supposed to be an illusion to now. Here's. Here's a trivia bit about Paul. So Paul, the, the, this person here, I've never, I've never been to a strip club. I've never been to one. I don't know, but I've seen them portrayed in movies. Mm -hmm. And apparently, you put you put dollars and things into thongs. Like I think that's the reference. It's what they say, but, yeah. But here in Canada, that can't work, right? Because we have loonies and toonies. Like I've, I've actually sometimes wondered how exactly. That can't have been a good day for the strippers when when the Canada government said, you know what, it's gives me metal coins now. It uh, when, okay, you know what, I'm not gonna get into it. Nope. No, you don't need to get into it. This is you. We can leave this all to a mystery. Yeah. Uh, e transfer, You're not wrong, Dave. Though. You're they not just wrong. Do e transfer. <laughs> You're not Venmo. Yeah, that's it. Just, just Venmo. <laughs> it's Cash App. <laughs>
allowed. It's not possible for life to evolve. Well, is right. it possible, though, that God plopped some down elsewhere? Or is that, well, is that ruled out? Uh, he, he said that he concentrated his energy on planet Earth. And, right. in fact, there is a Where new... Did he say that? Mm, yeah, no, he didn't. I have read the Bible from cover to cover more than once. Mm -hmm. I do not recall any reference where God's like, ah, I'm pretty much putting all my effort on this one. <laughs> Those Alpha Centauri guys. Yeah, nah, exactly. Not my thing. Um, but no, that, I believe it's Matthew where he actually says, uh, there are sheep in my pen that you know nothing about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And my, uh, hmm. I know people. Who who very much who who would like would like say well that's that's aliens yeah which I've always and, felt and why can't why, why can't but takes that very much out of context but no but but why couldn't it be like it literally is like there's nothing in the Bible that where God says I definitely made you and nothing else smart ever anyway yes yeah yes did you ever read the um oh what's the series the c.s lewis his sci-fi series where they go to mars and and different no uh, i didn't um, i can't no, remember I, what I they're called now Paralandry or something like that but it was kind of like it's c.s lewis so mm -hmm. you know it's it's gonna have a, a heavy it's Christian bent. Mm -hmm. well this is not allegorical this is oh straight up but it's how other alien races it's like so you go to mars and there's like creatures there but it's like they didn't have they didn't there was no fall there they didn't have an eden oh they 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 succeeded in their mission of yeah being sinless. earth is earth is the fallen planet earth is the one where the enemy has succeeded and they went but everywhere else is like no things are still great you know like everything's good because we didn't we didn't fuck up and eat the apple right did you? Yeah, there we go. Paralandria. Out of the Silent Planet. That's the whole series. They're actually not bad books. Yeah. Because C.S. Um, Lewis is, is a good author. Yeah. Did you see the Arthur C. Clarke? I think it was called Children's End. Is that what it was called? Yes. Childhood's End. Childhood's End. Did you yeah. see that that an adaptation for Space Channel or whatever it was? No, I've read the I've read it. I've I've not yeah. ever seen any. Good. Whatever don't don't watch the no. adaptation. It it's was probably not super good. It's it was well awful, done. but it was a good book. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Arthur C. Clarke has some very good books. Uh, it was it was the exact opposite what C. S. Clarke was. So it, it was essentially like, well, yeah, the, the we got these idea of demons and angels from aliens. Right. Yeah. Oh. Uh, wait. If deity sent its only begotten son to earth, then did it send its only begotten daughter to Betarectuli? Um, Betarectuli? I don't know. Is that supposed to be? I don't know what that's supposed to say. So in the C.S. Lewis world, they would argue that the alien planets know that Jesus came to earth. Mm. And it's kind of a, it's a big deal for them. And they're like, oh yeah, look what God did and Jesus did for. Oh, for, for the, for my, for the losers. For the losers, for those fallen, the fallen people, the silent planet. Yeah. Mm. Uh, apparently, people have been doing strip club research for me here. All right. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> You're going to get some um, invitations. Do uh, what you want. The answer to this one is generally yes. <laughs> But not always. But not always. Scientific study called equidistant letter sequencing. But if, if, all, you know, if that's true, though, Doctor, it's it's so sad you can hardly think about it. And in, in other words, if we are the only life in all of this, the only intelligent life, or even any kind of life in all of this, well, it I, makes I, that's too sad to contemplate. I mean, and I don't even believe it. On Mars, where you've got water now, we know, oh, well, and you've, sure. you've got volcanic activity inside the planet, and you've got water frozen inside Correct. the planet, then probably you have at least microbial life. That's probable. Well, let's explore that. Microbial life in its basic form is bacterial. That's the simplest, supposedly the simplest form of life. Okay. But now... <laughs> Every time he says, okay, he's like, I'm just, 
this is for the sake of the show. We're letting you get it. I do like that. Uh, that Art was like, look, I was willing to give you some rope here and let you just go with this. But if you're going to tell me there's not aliens, this yeah. is just too sad for my life to go. Yeah, Art's, Art is not going to be on board with this at all. <laughs> yeah. Microbiologists are finding what's called irreducible complexity. Most of those little microbes, those little bacteria, have a little flagellum. That little flagellum well, some is so tiny that 8 million of them would fit in the dimension of a human hair. Yet it has a shaft, a universal joint, a rotor, a stator, bushings, and it runs by energy it can reverse itself counterclockwise or clockwise it can get okay but but, but it's okay let's say we go to mars which we're getting ready to all right he was going down the michael b he yeah i'm ordering another drink okay nice um yeah you know this is you know kitz miller versus dover trial and the, the flagellum and all that kind of stuff i do not anyway yeah in in the late 80s, early 90s, I want to say, I could be wrong about the date, there was a big trial in the States as to whether uh, intelligent design could be taught in schools. And it was the okay. Kitzmiller versus Dover trial. Anyway, specifically, Ooh, I do the, believe. The, the, the example that was brought up um, that was used was this flag- bacterial flagellum that he's talking about here. Um, that, that it's basically this little tail that these things have, and it's run, it's run by, by a couple of parts of the cell that you know make it seem like it might be a motor yeah, yeah i know what it is, yeah. anyway yeah. in that they lost incredibly poorly at the trial because they brought up scientists christian scientists who said no no right. no like if you like this whole notion of uh, irreducible complexity is is ridiculous because if you took away one part sure it doesn't work as a flagellum anymore but it works it Thank now you. now it's it's a, it's a different machine, right? And it does work for that other thing, which is also advantageous. And then if you take away another part, well, no, it doesn't work as that, but it works. Like it's just it was just a demonstration in court. This is what I love. And literally, yeah. a Catholic judge at the end of it was like, "No, intelligent design isn't science." So, <laughs> so yeah, anyway. sorry, sorry, man. Yeah, um, I love that this case is lost in court, but they still keep bringing it up. But not only that, not only losing court, it was a Catholic judge, and the opposing witnesses were also Christians. Like it was just all they're Christians like, across the board. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, yeah, it no, doesn't this, work like this that. This is not dude. a thing. Yeah. Trial was in two thousands. Thank you. Judge was appointed by George W. Bush. Thank you. Anyway, there's an excellent documentary by Nova on it. If anyone cares, we'll move, we're going to move on and not relitigate the case. And we find at least microbial life. Uh, it, because Ark just dismissed it anyway. He, he went on, yes. they explained the whole thing. He said, back to Mars. <laughs> Anyways. Mars. Is that, Mars how is cool. that going to sit with you? Okay. First of all, we have to find it. Let, okay. Work uh, with yes. me. Let's say the, okay. the ship is back. The guys get off. They decompress. They test what they brought back. Oh, my God. Microbial life, at least. Okay. So how's that going to set with you? Uh, no real problem because uh, my colleagues and I have addressed this for a number of years. In fact, I was. Uh... Look. Hold on. I'll be right. There are so much better rums for like the same price. I can send you a list. I can send you a list, friend. In the like... Far East. So no, I, I I don't like. So I like. This, this is the first, like, really the first... Well, I like it because it was the first ROM I ever tried, and it was like, that. there's that bit of it, like, just, it's whatever. Yeah. Um, but I can get this in volume. This is what I like about this. I just get this big thing, and Shannon doesn't like it. So it's just, like, I am I just get to just... This because is just she has my taste. Rum. Okay. So, no, like, so Fleur de Canna is... I don't know if you've, if you've tried Fleur de Canna. I love Fleur de Canna. Yeah. Like love Fleur de Canna. It is it is only negligibly more expensive than this. Yeah. But it always comes in these tiny bottles, and and I like to save it for like. So I what what I like about Captain Morgan when I drink it is like this is the one that I have now I'm now past where it's purely drinking for like this is good taste. It's now like we're we're several in and we're 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 bringing up the band. Anyway, I do have I have my my extreme. This is the most expensive rum I've ever had. 
uh, the Relicario that Vice yes. Rhino bought me. Um, if someone, you gotta save at least a little bit of that for the next time if I ever come visit because I really want to try some. Oh, okay. So there's the so yeah. So that so but this is what I break out if it's like a special fancy night and I had a bit of it on their charity stream. Um, so it's not like I don't have other rums. We have um, also Ironworks around here makes a, a wide variety of amazing rums that I have. My kids bought me a bunch of rums for. Um, I forget what the occasion was. I have other rums. This is just what I'm going with tonight. But I appreciate Jasmine that uh, that you are concerned about my my taste and all this kind of stuff. I'm not trying to defend that I picked a good thing. I'm just giving my weird rationale. And who is bringing Dave these drinks? That's a good question. Well, that is my friend Darrell who is upstairs right now. There is there are people upstairs in my house. Uh there was a I made there was a dinner party and movie night that went on before this. And there are people upstairs having what sounds like a fairly intense conversation right now. I don't know what it's about, but they, I can clearly hear it. I don't know if you guys can hear it at all through this mic. And yet Dave is choosing to be with us. I'm choosing to be with you because you guys, you have my heart. This That's is right. where this is where I belong. You're my people. Right? Thanks, John. I agree. Anybody with a fucking taste bud in their mouth is who can tell the difference. Captain I can Morgan tell the shit. difference. So this is one of those weird things, like where I, I learned this from my upbringing, which was little, like literally, like I I just refuse the fancy stuff because I don't feel like I deserve it. Oh my, yeah, that, there you go. <laughs> you know, you know my family. You know that that would be a thing I would inherit, right? Yeah. 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 And the Sooner announcement later, came that they had found uh, microbial life in, uh, inside a... remains uh, in, in rocks that were found in the Arctic. But it turned out that that was not the case. Uh, well, it's still a, being argued. Uh, it, sure. But uh, yeah, sure. there's some... If his it is at this there, point. Yes. if microbial life is there, yes. there's an explanation for that. Uh, there is? Yes. A well, biblical explanation. Let's hear it. At the time of the flood, according to the 17th Mountains chapter of, the of Psalms, it. there was a tremendous noise that went out Mountains into uh, space. In addition to that, according to Genesis chapter 6. Probably all the people drowning. Well, <laughs> you may have something there. But in addition to that, you have uh, the tremendous eruption of the fountains of the great deep. The philosophy would have been such, with such a rupture, we've actually calculated that, that the Earth would have had microscopic rippage. And the velocity that we see in the rupture of a boiler would have been realized... And thus, you would reach speeds that would exceed the necessary 17,000 miles per hour to lose space, uh, lose gravity. Earth so, gravity. If, in other words, put simply, if it's there, it came from here. If it's there, it could have been expunged from the Earth itself, and some of it... So, Dave, in Genesis, it, it says that the, when the flood started, the fountains of the deep broke open. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so his theory is that it broke open... Beyond ter terminal velocity. Yeah. 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 So that's not in the Bible. We like the water was shooting out into space. Into space. Mars <laughs> and Europa and yeah. Yeah. That's that's how it got there. So for some reason, this guy has just like there can't be any kind of life anywhere in the universe except on Earth. Yes. Based on essentially nothing. And he's just like, he's planted his flag. Like, nope. It's impossible. And so we have to explain it away if you find anything else because it's impossible. Just because. I don't know why. There's nothing in the Bible. There's nothing no, anywhere, that's right. you know, like that says like there can't be. No, this is a very much a fringe, one of those. Like you're yeah. dying on a hill, you don't need to die on. It's a it's a fringe position yeah. that that you've just a hundred percent decided. No, there cannot be life on other anywhere else in the universe, but on Earth, just cause. Right. Uh. Um. I am not an RC. Co this is weird because when it comes to colas, no, like anything that isn't Coke, I just like 
if like so I'm one of those guys that are like, hey, I'd like a I'd like a, a Coke, and they say, yeah, is Pepsi okay? And I say, no, no, it's not. No. So, so whatever else. That's this weird. Are you a, are you a Coke Zero person? Yeah. So I I've switched entirely to Coke Zero a few years back. I've recently I switched to Coke Zero like a month ago. Okay. And still having like, hmm, this isn't Coke, <laughs> you know? So, okay, like on very rare occasions, I will actually try again, like actual Coke. And I can tell like, oh, this is like nectar of the gods. Like I totally yeah. get it. But um, for my own health, various things going on. Well, that That is the reason that I'm, I'm trying to switch, right? Is like, right. I've managed to lose a couple of pounds in the last month want to keep that you know trend yep. moving in that direction it's like i can look at numbers i can read right <laughs> so it's like i understand why i should be drinking coke zero instead of coke but it just it doesn't even come you know like the taste just no didn't, it's not no it's it's, know, it's so, not but it's one of those things yeah. um i also shouldn't yeah, be it's... drinking you know all the beer that i drink according to right. my doctor so and these everybody are... else everything's yeah. always choices on these things yeah. it's always just and you you're for me uh my my, Cheers, my thing is always don't drink your calories i prefer to eat my calories so that was a that was a compromise all right we have uh, a good one though like i i 100 endorse it you should be drinking coke zero i should be drinking coke mm. zero i am currently i'm trying yeah. to but uh oh deity no he's going to invoke nephilim freeze lunar bukaki or blows up all, all over the moon yes that yes. is that is essentially what it is yeah lunar bukaki i saw that movie <laughs> don't uh <ooh. laughs> don't uh don't google that if you uh if you're at work yeah i'll i'll, I'll send it to you on our private discord server later you that's right Coke Zero, maybe I need to unsubscribe. Just kidding. Okay, well, Corn Corn Mac, is it Com Mac? Oh no, it's Com Mac. Whom Com Mac? I also met you. Uh, okay, so let me know. Uh, All these people exactly. you're meeting, I don't like you making other friends. <laughs> I'm I'm distressed by your decreased emotional dependency on our relationship. I understand. So I shouldn't. Yeah, I, I that is a stop thing. talking to other people. They're liars uh, but, and they're but get apparently you know. well well Com Mac is apparently not wanting to talk to me anymore. I don't but I am Com yeah. Mac curious as to what is the correct answer. Was it Pepsi? Was it Coke? Was it regular? I think Coke? I think it's the Coke Zero part. So I think regular Coke, he's okay. okay. That's the Coke Zero. All right. Yeah. Um Dr. Pepper is gross. So Dr. Pepper is fantastic. No. I'll fight you. You yeah you and you have we fought oh, on this very issue, but I will punch you right in that haircut. I always point out that because I dislike Doctor Doctor Pepper. There's or 23 herbs and <laughs> herbs and spices. Roads. It's it's like if they mixed some Kentucky yeah. Fried Chicken right in there. Fuck, I I'd, I'd drink it. <laughs> Look, there's more for you. If I don't like it, there's more for you could have survived. Isn't this an awfully egotistical position? I uh, mean, everything revolves around us. We're the only life, uh, and if there is microbial life elsewhere, it sprang from Earth or got shot off Earth or blasted off Earth or whatever. Isn't that awfully egotistical? Well, first of all, it makes us very special. Well. Second... <laughs> <laughs> it's not egotistical. It's not it just makes us very special. We're just very special. We're not egotistical. We're just the center of the universe and everything revolves around us and we're the, the only ones that matter. That's right. If that's, if the, hey, if that's ego, that's uh, it's on you. And this is very important. This is very lonely. Uh, well, no, because there's angelic life. There's the creator himself embracing us. Uh, there are scholars who have stated that SETI, you know, the search for extraterrestrial life. I, I interview here. those fellows all the time. In fact, yeah. one next week, we're going to have a debate. There are major scholars who admit that if intelligent signals had been broadcast, we would have found them by now. No. Well, no, no, they don't. I... <laughs> no. 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 no, there aren't. No. 
admit like admit that we would have found them by now that's a that's a whole thing holy yeah. cow it's the whole fermi paradox and the right yeah. yeah the seti people certainly don't feel that way no yeah, yeah. I interviewed Dr. Seth Shostak. He he's uh, you know down at Arecibo, really doing the work, and uh, and uh, they've examined a very tiny portion of it all so far. And there is a, a lots and lots of reasons why we would not have found anything at all yet. We've only examined a small part of it, and of course well, it, it would take a very long time. Not from your point of view, I understand, but it would take a very long. Well, actually, yes, it would. Yeah, because of the expansion of space yeah. fabric and the dilation of time. Right. The, the right. time really is there in deep space. Okay, then it would take a very long time for the signals to get here. Yeah, but uh, I'm simply quoting the scholars, a number of scholars themselves. In other words, there's controversy. What, what are their names, Carl? Yeah, I'm <laughs> quoting scholars. Paul. Reputable scholars, many scholars, big scholars. <laughs> I'm quoting them Only all. the best scholars. We have all the best well, scholars. We have all the best scholars, and all of them agree that there is no life anywhere except Earth, and there never will be. And, and if there was, we would have found it by now. God loves us most. Mm -hmm. See in the paper, field. Uh, and in a journal just the other day about how much God loves us. It was a big paper. You probably saw it. Reviewed by uh, all the top peers. Scientists in, top scientists. Top uh, scientists. In quantum theology. Yep. <laughs> have you taken, uh, yeah, we have quantum, quantum phys ed. We have quantum. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Our book uh, has been published by a major uh, astrophysicist called Rare Earth indicating the very thing we're talking about, that the uh, elemental composition of planet Earth is unique in everything we have found. There's no other planet like ours. Uh, dealing with empirical science. Empirical science is... That's one of those things where, of course, you get to just, like, if you just define the specialness, it's the, an ad hoc thing, right? It's like, oh, well, yeah. no, the Earth... You can't... Sure, you can find a planet that's the exact same distance, but... You know, we have 10% more water, so we're completely unique, you know, and yeah. Well, and certainly yeah. in 2002, we weren't, we didn't have the exoplanet knowledge we have now. Right. So we really were only looking at solar, you know, inter-solar system planets to compare against. Yeah. Um, it just annoys me anytime where we're, and I'm getting this more in this Jesus uh, Jesus resurrection research where it's like we're comparing I'm comparing my religion to well there's no religion like Christianity because no other religion has a virgin birth and I'm like well like wh why wh why does that matter like that doesn't matter <laughs> yeah yeah observation deduction from observation yes but deduction uh, from observation absolutely concludes that the numbers really are on the sides of a uh, side of many 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 earth-like planets but there never has been found one outside planet earth well not yet uh but we're just now discovering planets around suns uh an inference of planets said. Uh, a slight wobble. Yep. Uh, and of course, we could discuss that all night. But actually, what we're saying wobble, is empirical care. data has not yet found any. I, I think it's a commendable scientific project to find out what's out there. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, some of the people involved in some of the advanced studies at NASA have talked to me about using our technology in deep space exploration. Yes. And I said, uh, well, let's get down serious and uh, consider this. Uh, and we're talking about an original context prior to the flood, which generated tremendous growth. For instance, in the, uh, today, the Lycops at Club Moss gets only about 16 to 18 inches. Why would not... Let me tell you about these tomatoes, Paul. <laughs> but also... You know how you, yeah. So I've created this way to grow three times more things, more, whatever it is, I can, I can generate three times more yield than everyone else. The only person coming knocking at my door is NASA. Yeah. Not like a food company, not like United Nations looking for, you know, areas that have famine. 
Oh, and also, by the way, not NASA. Just gonna <laughs> throw that out there. <laughs> NASA's yeah. interested. Yeah. Well, but aren't in the fossil record that anyway. I feel yeah. like this guy went on like the same kind of tour of NASA that you or I could get by showing up. And he's extrapolating all the rest. Hey, if anybody does, this is a little tip for the chat now. If you do go for a tour of NASA, they have one called the, uh, I think it's called the Level 9 Tour. And it's like the the extra good tour. You have to actually get security clearance. You have to go through a security check from the military. Um, it is, I've, I've done tours of NASA so much better. Absolutely do that one. You get to go like sort of ground level on a lot of the really cool stuff there. And they only do like 15 or 20 people a day on that tour. And it's fantastic. Highly recommend it. Was this Houston or Cape Canaveral? Houston. Yeah. Awesome. This was actually I've, cool. uh, I've done Cape Canaveral, but I've never been to Houston. You get to go into like the actual, so you get to go into the historic um, command mission control, you know, like the Houston, we have a problem and it's mm -hmm. like, it's the real room when you, you're walking around, you're like, Holy crap, I've seen this in so many things. You get to go to current mission control where they're currently monitoring the ISS and different things. You get to go to like the pool where the astronauts are, you know, have done the thing. They have a full life-size replica of the ISS, like a real, you know, fully functional exact copy of it that's just down on so that if you want to test the system or do whatever, it's like it's there and you can do it. This is exactly the same as what's up in space right now. And you can't go into the ISS, but you can walk around and and sort of see it. You get within a couple feet of it and you can see the actual size of it and different things. And um when I did it, the guy guiding the tour was a person who had been an engineer on the Apollo missions and was like sort of telling us a whole bunch of oh. different stories and different things they went to. It was, it was incredibly cool. Um, yes. Anyways, if you're into awesome. that kind of thing at all, can't recommend it highly enough. Um, and it's cool. So you're walking around every now and then you'll see like the actual, the sort of normal tours and they're on like some catwalk that's 90 feet up in the sky watching and you're just waving. You're like, Hey, I'm right down here in this thing and you're just looking at me from far away bet you wish you'd spent the extra 80 bucks now you bastard have you seen the apple plus series uh, for all mankind oh i love for all mankind yeah why have you and i not talked about for all mankind okay that not for now but holy cow that show yeah. i literally i mean like the second to... season right now yeah oh, oh okay so i won't spoil things i'm not fully caught up my but, one um, friend here has like been bragging me for years. To, like you got to watch yeah, this show. You got to so watch good. this show. And like yeah. I thought it was just gonna be like I thought I was just gonna enjoy the space parts, much like I as a kid I enjoyed like Arthur C. Clarke, 2010, 2060, like those books I enjoyed. I thought I was gonna enjoy it, only, but there's a few like this. I've I've literally had to stop the show and like stop for a day or two because my emotions are too invested. <laughs> like I'm not getting right. too sad yeah. about what's happening. Yeah. Anyway. Um. I'm going to I'm going to come back to Karn Mac. Hold on. Uh I do remember New Coke. I totally remember New Coke. Um Oh yeah. Yep. And then I'm Coke old Classic. enough. I did yeah. not like it. Nope. It, Nobody nope. did. Nope. Didn't enjoy it. That was a bad move. Uh what's the premise of this guy? I'm assuming so that is my What do you think Gabe? of the the quasi conspiracy theory Paul that New Coke was introduced specifically as part of like the long-term marketing to bring back Coke classic and that it was purposely like that. We know this isn't good and we're oh. doing it specifically so we can bring back Coke classic to great fanfare and thereby long-term increase the sales of. I Coke, actually do think there is something to yeah. that, but, I, but given, I, I feel like, I, you know, there's no way to prove this or not prove this. I feel like they thought they could have two drinks on the market. Like, I don't think that they thought, I don't think that they thought the reaction to new Coke was going to be that bad. Right. I think what they thought was that there, we could now maybe have two drinks on the market. That eventually we can bring back Coke class. Can right. Have both the, exactly. Yeah. Like, I think that was always in the works. Right. Um, but I think it was, 
I don't think it was intended that the new Coke was would fail so spectacularly. Would fail so spectacularly. Possible, like it is. It's it, it's it seems it seems a little. I I don't know people who whose jobs hinge on quarterly results. It feels like some yeah. that doesn't seem like the kind of thing that that would. Be. I I agree with you, but yes. All right. What's the premise of this guy? So I'm assuming. Do you mean Dave, or do you mean, or do you mean uh, Carl Baugh, or do you mean Art Bell? Premise of my guy is pretty much you know, summed up right here in this wonderful shirt I'm wearing. That's right. It's my, this is my friend Dave who has much nicer shirts than I do. Yeah. But much less hair. Well, I don't know about, uh, you know, in terms of number of follicles. I, I mean, know. yes. We'll probably, probably, number of follicles, but in terms of like, sure, you know, if we add up the length of all of our hairs, you, you might be. Right. I've seen you without a shirt on. I don't think that's true. <laughs> All right. I was thinking neck up hair, but if you're going to go there. I'm wearing a sweater underneath the shirt, ladies and gentlemen. There's a Paul <laughs> secret for you. Mm. You don't know my current grooming. That is true. I don't know. You got some Manscaped product. Are you sponsored? Mm, yeah. Mm, yeah. Yeah, that's right. I'm looking for, yeah. the Looking for sponsorship. Manscaped, you know, reach out to us. That's right. Yeah. They sponsor yeah. almost everything else. Why not us? Yeah. What the hell? What do we got to do? <laughs> Got up to 120 feet in stature. So uh, I hold a patent on the world's first hyperbaric biosphere after now it's 40 years of research. I need to uh, oh, update right, some of the data. Uh, it's not just 30 years, it's 40 years of research. And uh, this technology holds tremendous potential in deep space exploration. So I commend uh, deep space exploration, but I think we should guard that exploration with uh, truth embracement in data. So then uh, from your point of view then, Doctor, uh, if there are reports of abductions and aliens and craft uh, seen here on Earth, your explanation for them would have to be that they are... Um, they are probably uh, demons of some sort. Well, I really have not had time. You can see I've lived a very busy life. I have not had time to give that area serious consideration. Well, I know, but there, there is no other answer according to what you just explained to me. In other words, if there's any life that's anywhere else, period, it came from here or got or was seeded from here or something or another. So then, therefore, uh, any saucers or alien life or abductions or all, any of the stuff that, that you hear about uh, and that uh, people will tell you stories about and even present evidence of uh, would have to be demons because there is no other intelligent life. So it would have to be some sort of demon or something like that. Well, uh, again, I really have not uh, looked at the evidence. Uh, perhaps if I have, uh, if I can extend my life as... <laughs> As predicted uh, by working in the biosphere, I'll have time to look at the data. You, I'd rather give you an honest, forthright answer based on observation, and I don't have that information. So I'll just have to leave that question. All right, uh, all right. I want to let a, a few people in here because I promised. Uh, first time caller line, you're on the air with uh, Dr. Ball. Hello. We got to the calls. Okay, well, so before we go, we do have a super chat we should. Uh... From Tim? Yeah. And now it's time for the calls. Pants, yes. Mugs, yes. Soap, yes. And landscaping, no. Yeah. The important difference in all of those things, Tim, is that one of those is a real company that would pay us real money. <laughs> the other <laughs> three are, um, you know, insane jokes that I made up. <laughs> okay. We are at the callers. So, so let's get to the calls. It's 4 a.m. Let's roll. <laughs> you poor bastard. What are you doing? I don't You're know. How long have we been on air? For four it's hours. It's got to be I guess, three right? hours. Okay. Uh, so we still have. Okay. We got 187 people watching. We're still good. Callers. We're still 187 people watching. Yeah. We're four hours in. I feel like few have been with us since the beginning. That This is probably like come and go tea here. Hello? All right. Hello. Well, let's hear some yes, 
Uh, the question I had was that uh, if uh, all the objects that we're looking at out in space are, uh, I guess, millions of, of light years away, and if the Earth is, is, is only 6,000 years old, then those objects that blew up, and, you know, that, because um, uh, uh, that never really happened. And then doesn't that make God a liar then? Uh, if, if those things ever blew up? Well, uh, not at all. First of all, light travels, of course, very rapidly, 186,282.0244866 miles per second. That's pretty fast. And in that travel, it, of course, gives us information. The information that we're finding is disarray, that galaxy, uh, galactic uh, bodies are exploding, that there are tremendous uh, spiral nebulae that have disturbance and warps within them. All of this is consistent with the second law of thermodynamics and consistent with the biblical... That's not the question. Yeah, also has nothing question... to do with entropy. The question wasn't, hey, aren't stars perfect, and haven't they always been perfect, so isn't that neat? Yeah. Ugh. The question was, essentially, yes. we, we, we're we observing things... Very proud you memorized that number. Yes. We're, we're observing things, we're observing explosions that, if the Earth is only 6,000 years old, God made explosions mid... God made the light... To reflect that explosion that never happened. Yeah. And doesn't that make God some kind of trickster? And I, I'm, I'm with him. I'm with him on this. Model doesn't make God a liar at all. That at the time of the flood, according to Second Samuel 22 and Psalm 18, God expanded the space fabric again out of mercy because the disruptions on planet Earth had compromised near space. So you do have explosions that are accounted for in the creation. Um, <laughs> what? This is news to me. Yeah, this is not okay. So, in according to Psalms, line with I know about stretching the heavens in Psalms, but I don't know that we'd have a second stretching of the heavens. Stretching of heavens. I'm, no, I'm not gonna. We'll, we'll, we'll just. I've been waiting for the callers. We're gonna let this roll. <laughs> Model, the just biblical go, record. Yeah. In fact, we would predict that the star bodies that were originally designed with oscillating vibrations affecting us positively would be in disarray. Galactic uh, balance would be in disarray, and that's what, what we're predict? finding. We have the positive oscillating stars. To me, that's what we're... I mean, the positive oscillations of the stars affecting us would be negatively impacted by the events of the flood. That would fit all mathematical models. So everything is checking out so far. Also, the Earth is 6,000 years old. <laughs> this, this, this galaxies. You know... I have a spreadsheet and I summed it and it worked out. If there if there was life on these corners of galaxies, which obviously we know there's not because the Bible says there's yeah. not, yeah, uh, they would say, "What's whoa? What's what's with our orbit happening here?" It's like, oh, too much water on Earth. Too much water and on so Earth. <laughs> yeah, too many, too many nanum. So somebody's got to wipe it all out and uh, get the oscillations back yeah. in harmonious uh, and, conjunction. But, but wait, was symphonic? The water all resolutions wasn't the water always there to begin with so the fact that some of it's above the surface and some of it's not have actually no effect whatsoever <laughs> paul paul you know it's possible that the slowing of the spacecraft has to do with our with our placement in the universe and some of that disruption or it could have to do with a slowing down of the acceleration of uh, matter and space fabric. All right, I want to try another approach with you. Uh, when you said you hadn't thought much about aliens or abductions or any of the rest of it, I, I don't know if that's totally right. I mean, I understand that you are aware of some research that indicates if the, if the human mind is exposed to a certain frequency, then uh, people begin to experience 
angelic presences or uh, abduction experiences or all sorts of the things that I talk about a lot on this program. It has to do with the limbic system, which well, is central to the base of the brain. Yes, yes. Yes, uh, so I'm, I'm aware of that, certainly. And, well, you and are. it alters consciousness. You see, so you have thought about it a little bit. I'm... <laughs> Thoughts? <laughs> I mean, I don't even... We're four I, hours in. What are we? Dave, what are we even? What are we even doing here, Paul? What's... If your brain is exposed <laughs> to frequencies, right. frequencies, yep, certain frequencies, we don't know of what frequency. Yep, I don't. I don't know what that means. Limbic uh, system. Of... <laughs> system. You will think about angels, and Carl's like, "Yeah, pff, I know this." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> art, 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 Come art, on. art. Please. I'm not a it's child. Me. It's it's me, yeah. Carl. I know. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I know. But you know, uh, what are you suggesting? If you affect it, in what way it does it produces these results? Well, aberrations of the brain can be stimulated with a number of uh, basic factors. Uh, but again, I'm totally honest in that. Uh, while I'm intrigued <laughs> with the idea, I really That's haven't had time to give it an honest appraisal. And without an honest appraisal, you know, I'd be dishonest if I just uh, shot in the dark and said... Well, but I, I mean, I that, 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 that is sort of an answer uh, to this question. Uh, you, you're suggesting that a certain portion of the brain, if affected by the right frequency or the right uh, who knows what... Can malfunction. Can malfunction and begins to have these experiences, which explain away the majority of this sort of thing uh possibly that's true the human brain is an incredible machine in fact it is the most complicated structure technical research admits it's the most complicated structure in the entire universe uh 100 billion brain cells uh, each having technical you have the technical research they were out there they're trying to prove yeah. about that there's more co complicated things and they just had to reluctantly come back Heads, it's the brain. Yeah, tails tucked between their legs. I guess the yeah. brain is better. Yeah, this is a classic example of Art working hard to make his guests, mm. you know, present the best case scenario of like, I'm gonna work to make you sound less crazy and <laughs> right. right. Maybe like, you're you're not wrong. It's a good example of that. An average of 50,000 neuron connections to other brain cells. Uh, in fact, uh, evolutionary theory really runs amok here because if we learn something new every second and assimilated that with what we already know, it would take over 3 million years to use up our brain capacity. Now, according to evolutionary theory, we evolve what we need. Well, if we're only going to live to be 105 or 10, why would we evolve a brain that could go on for a minimum of 3 million years? Yeah, they say we only use, what, 10%? Oh, like 8%. That. 8%. No, that's yeah, that's very little. Yeah, yeah very little. Impossible. In fact, uh, it's a lot more incredible than that. Uh, it goes back to, to uh, creation. Well, uh, how much of the brain were Adam and Eve using before the apple? No, no. I'm okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah, now we're getting into just... The most ridiculous pseudoscience. If we learn a new thing every second, our brains yep. would still not be full after three million years. Yep. That doesn't seem right. Nope. I, uh, nope. I like, I've been on this stream and I've forgotten what I was doing, like, why I paused the stream. Yep. That said, I uh, there are still Weird Al song lyrics in my head that shouldn't be there. Rightfully so, those should be purged. They should be, Paul. Mm. If you can't sing all the lyrics to the biggest ball to in Minnesota, then you're not right. <laughs> what on earth can make a man such a do, try to do such a crazy thing? Da -da 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 oh. Where did he get the twine? What was going through his mind? Where did he find Maybe the time? <laughs> The good, good idea, idea time. Yeah. <sighs> oh, we're getting down to serious discussion. You see, before you're born, you lose half your brain cells. Genetically, Art, you and I produced 
200 billion brain these there's fetuses with twice as many brain cells as we have yeah that doesn't sound okay right. i really what really if adam was you have to what who i really really have to go to the bathroom okay well i will should are we ending the stream or i'm taking it solo for a minute well it's up to you friend i'll We're take it solo for now. a minute we'll, you want we'll... to push big dig up you come back and we'll we'll decide okay I'm smart. What? Why did he take the bite? Because he had a choice, and he made the well, wrong choice. I know, but if he was using so much of his brain... He wasn't using much of it at that time, but it was <laughs> there for him to use. All 200 billion brain cells, each with an average of 50,000 neuron connections to other brain cells. So what that actually means is when you... Add uh, when you multiply all the factors, that gives you eight billion quadrillion years to use your brain capacity. And now, a publishing neurologist at the University of Arizona has found that that's not how that works. That's not how any of this works. Uh, but I do actually like Art's point there that, like, if our brains were perfect when Adam was created, why did he fall for the ruse? Why did he fall for Satan's ruse? That's that's a that's a good question. Every one of those neuron connections has the potential, the computing potential, of a desktop computer. Desktop, not laptop. Meaning that that brain that we have, were it not for the... <laughs> this is a product of its time, 2002. Wow. It's like, we're not talking about any computers now. Not just, not just a laptop computer, but a desktop computer. That is a, that is a, whole, different, <laughs> a whole different level rest of the body die yeah in modern day we wouldn't make such a distinction no so early that brain that we have was designed to go on forever assimilating information and functioning dave our brains are not only more powerful than laptop computers they're also uh -huh. more powerful than desktop computers that's what you missed well there you go i also caught we were going away that if we're so smart why did adam eat the apple yeah <laughs> yeah so that's the argument where yeah we've had only one caller so far i guess we've it's only, only been caller. in 10 minutes do you do you want to go a little bit longer what is the what does the chat think i feel like we need at least one more caller because we're probably late okay, enough we're more. never coming back to this again no this is we're not doing a part two on this one so okay well, let's, let's get know. one more caller okay you bet our, our bodies are not All right, we're just about to go back to the lines, but Steve, I, I get these questions, uh, Doctor, by uh, computer. Steve in Toronto, Canada asks a pretty good one. Since Dr. Ball is so literal in his interpretations of the Bible, then if God started us from Adam and Eve, how do you explain the people of Nod that Cain encountered, and how do you explain all these different races? All right. The uh, standard interpretation, misinformation, is that uh, Cain went to the land of Nod, found a wife, and married her. So uh, did he marry half gorilla? Did he marry a person of another race? What's the question? Well, the biblical record doesn't say he went to the land of Nod and found a wife. The biblical record states that Cain went to the land of Nod and knew his wife. The word knew there is the word for family relationship, sexual intercourse. In other words, uh, Cain went to the land of Nod. And knew her biblically. And knew her biblically <laughs> and started a family. Now, okay. but that doesn't answer where she came from. No, it sure... Bow, chicka, bow, wow, chicka, bow. <laughs> uh, that's, that's what we're getting into? Okay, yeah. Um, no, that's, that, I don't love that yeah. question because that's it's so no. easy for Christians to answer that one. Like, if we're... Yeah, people who believe in the old Old Testament creation story. Yeah. Um, I get, though, it is, like, it, it does seem prob incredibly problematic. Wait, there's a whole other city? Yeah. Some, that, that you, that is, thing, and you're just, you're still fighting with your brother? Like, why didn't you yeah. move? <laughs> why didn't you I move over it. to here with this, this land yeah. of God? Hopefully we'll get in. But that was a, that was a, that was a question delivered by computer according to art i need to just, that's just a computer delivered this doesn't yeah. okay yeah. let's try to address that let's try the closer to creation we get the i'm gonna skip, I'm gonna skip to like let's just give it a minute a tree a qualified tree standing upright 
and it was waterborne. That's the reason it was upright, because the roots are heavier. Mm. And at the base of that, the roots were coalified, and there was an entire coal seam. Above that, there was sandstone, and the fossil was sandstone, and the entire seam was sandstone. Above that, more coal, an entire seam of coal. And the tree changed from sandstone to coal to limestone, back to coal to sandstone to coal again. And then a context of sedimentation of a major flood. How big? Well, in our excavations here at Glen Rose along the Paluxy, Nova was coming over my shoulder as we excavated a lepidodendron. Hi. Um, hi, Eric. Love the show. Thank you. Where are you? I am in St. Catharines, Ontario. I'm listening to you on uh, WBN out of uh, Buffalo. All right. Excellent. Go ahead. Um, I'd just like to say, uh, Dr. Ball, is it? Yes, Ball. Uh, Dr. Ball, um, it sounds to me like what, what you're saying here is running counter to the last 400 years of science. Um, it's very actually similar to uh, what St. Saint- there you go, good Augustine Canadian. Wrote in his book, uh, The City of oh, God, uh, where... My, my earphones died. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So I can't hear anything that Aiden's saying right now. I'm going to let it keep playing, though. Uh, he uh, suggested a uh, creation date of about 5,000 B.C. Um, I mean, since that time, uh, we've had so many breakthroughs in scientific discovery that have gotten us to the stage that we're at now. Um, just uh, I have a few points that I wanted to, to bring up, and then I'll get off and listen to your answer. Um, we have, first of all, you were saying that Earth is the, uh, the center of the universe. Now, that is simply because when we observe the universe, it seems relatively uniform in whatever direction we look. Therefore... Because we can all, only see so far. Right, but therefore, all points, according to Stephen Hawking, in his book, A Brief History of Time, all points can be regarded as center, because when we look around, the universe seems relatively relatively the same all right, in every hold, direction. Hold, hold that point. It's a good one. Let's hear the answer. He's right. In other words, uh, if it's endless, essentially, then from any point... All right, Dave. There you go. Yeah. I can hear you. Well, I don't know what you missed. Can so you hear I missed. Me? The, I missed. Yeah, I can hear you, but I I haven't heard. The, I didn't hear any of the caller. So what, this young man you... from St. Catharines has basically said he's like, um, so everything you're saying flies counter to the last 400 years of scientific advancement. All the arguments you're making are the arguments that St. Augustine made in his book, mm-hmm. you know, hundreds of years ago. Yeah. Uh, and he started by saying like, I want to bring up a couple points, and I'll let you answer. He started by talking about how like in the universe is like. Well, it's the center of the universe. Like where you're standing, observing, it will always look like the center in an essentially. Oh, okay, that's universe. what we were talking about. Yep. And he brought up the brief history of time and Stephen Hawking, and he's like, "Yep, you know, you can literally pick any point in the universe, and if you were at that point and looking around, it would look like you were at the center of the universe because that's how the universe works." Okay. Yeah. And so he's still, so he's the... He was going to bring up a couple of good arts, like, okay, well, let's just stop right there at that first one, let him respond to it, and then we'll come back to to more. Yeah. All right. Well, let me see if I can... As he just points out, uh, it would appear to be the center, because you could look equally distant in all directions. uh, I appreciate the question, Cardaline. First of all, uh, my statement was the Earth is at or near the center, and of course you admitted that the data indicate uh, that... It is at or near the center because the galaxies are receding from us. Stephen Hawking and others have postulated, again, uh, we're speaking of postulation, that if we were at another point in the universe, it would look the same. But that's a postulate. There is no data supporting that. In fact, it could not look the same because we are getting now from the Hubble telescope data indicating the explosion of galaxies, and we see those in reference to each other. So while the uniformitarian context, and I I don't mean to be technical in that, uh, that's that's a concept explaining everything with homogeneity in the universe. While that's wishful, while it would be nice to have that, it's wishful thinking because we do find in space reference to other galactic bodies. We know that we're moving at a rapid rate toward Orion. We see a relative motion that we're engaged in. So uh, while uh, Stephen Hawking has uh, 
postulated that in order to explain away the centrality of planet Earth. It is not supported by empirical data. Now, your first question had to do with 400... It is. I mean, in the, in the sense that somehow we haven't traveled to another galaxy to do the same measurements to see. Yeah. Yeah. All but right. It's, it's important even within data of where, where we are right now. But yep. moving on. Yeah. All right. So I feel like uh, I feel like maybe we, we it's time to wrap it up. Yep. Caller good. Uh, so that caller was disappointing because, well, I mean, made a great point. But the. Uh, it sounds the, like he had more to say and he's getting cut off. But yeah. The caller, you mean? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Carl clearly is uh, doesn't have much stick to him. He doesn't have that. No. All right, what have we learned, Dave? Have we learned anything? Well, I learned that there are dinosaurs in Papua New Guinea. Uh, <laughs> right. Dr. Carl has seen them. Mm. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to get a picture of them. But there's like 23 eyewitnesses. We all saw it. We saw the dinosaur. Also, definitely. I don't know if you heard, but he already has a permit to take the, the eggs back. Yeah. So they yeah. wouldn't just do that. First of all, we can just take his word on that. Who would lie about such a thing? Yeah. All right. Well, Dave, as always, it's a, my great pleasure to hang with you and to spend time with you listening to uh, the lovely reminiscence that is Art Bell. Hey, you bet. Do you want to? Uh, you want to uh, sign off? You want to sign off joke today, friend? Yes, please sign off joke. Okay, right. sign off joke. Um... Okay, this is a little... Okay. A blind man walks into a bar. Goes up to the bar. He orders a beer. He's drinking his beer. He's listening to the conversation around him, enjoying it. And he says... After a while, he says, uh, Hey, who wants to hear a joke about a blind woman? Well, like ripples in a pond, all of a sudden, just silence spreads. And... All of a sudden, it's dead quiet. You could hear a pin drop in this bar. And the bartender says, we're having a good night tonight, friend. So before you tell this joke, I'm going to let you know, I'm a blonde woman. And I can bench press over 350 pounds. And she says, sitting to your right is a blonde woman who was a U.S. Army Ranger, served two tours of duty. And sitting on your left is a blonde woman who is both a CrossFit champion and practices Brazilian jiu-jitsu and could probably break you in half with one arm. So now that you know all that, do you still want to tell this joke? And blind man says, oh, no, no. Not if I'm going to have to explain it three times. <laughs> I didn't laugh. I didn't laugh. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's it. You just got canceled. That's... I'm not canceled. Oh, yeah. shoot. You're on the, now you're on the Fred, Fred set this lovely super chat. Before I know, he knew Fred. What was only you'd know. And Good stream the team. Depths Thanks. of depravity we were about to embark on. You never would have given us even a dollar, much less 20. Sorry, Fred. <laughs> well, I appreciate everyone who hung out with us in whole <laughs> and especially those yep. of you who stayed stuck with us to the end. Stuck with us to the so, bitter end. Um, I, and also fortunately, the, I mean, the technology worked well enough that we kind of had a stream. I learned some things about to, to improve, but in the comments, did you like this layout? Did you like this format? Is there anything yeah. like visually that we would uh, like to improve or audio wise? Let me know in the comments and, uh, we will take that on board for next time and probably ignore you. We're always trying to get better, right? Yeah, every day right. in every way we're we're only in competition with ourselves yes that's right all right even well, then most of the time we lose that's right thanks for watching <laughs> it. and until next time never eric never good night goodbye good luck